to Olsen Field at Bluebell Park in College Station, where tonight the Sam Houston State Bearcats have made the short trek west on Highway 30 to face off with the Texas A&M Aggies. Let us bring you into the broadcast booth where I'm Will Johnson with a man in Mark Johnson, who was the head coach of both of these programs in his past 21 years at A&M, five at the helm of the Bearcats. Good to have you with us on the broadcast, and we're going to spotlight a couple of guys right now. For Sam Houston State, the catcher is really good. That's Robbie Rojas. Yeah, he's a big-time energy giver, and he's at the, well, he hits the ball very well. He's got a 326 uh, batting average. He's got 31 RBIs. He's a he's a ringleader. He's out of Jersey Village, a senior, went to Blend Junior College, and has come in here and, and really been a, a, a big-time Bearcat. Now, on the Aggies side of things, we've been talking about Braden Shoemake all year. No reason to stop now, Coach. No, he hasn't let up. This wasn't just a streak. I mean, he is a flat, good hitter, good player. He's got a batting average of 351. He's got 16 doubles, uh, two triples, nine home runs, slugging percentage at 563. Here's the incredible thing. He's got 61 RBIs. The closest to him is 30. Yeah. I mean, he just, if they get on the bases, he's going to get them off. Uh, and he just absolutely moves runners and has had a tremendous year for a freshman to get into this conference and do what he's doing is, is outstanding. Well, both of these teams have had midweek success in 2017. We'll talk about that a little later. For the Aggies to continue it, they'll ask Turner Larkins to take to the mound. He's a big power pitcher. He's done well. He's been a Tuesday guy for uh, – a uh, and M. He's a junior right-hand pitcher. He's got a 1-1 record, but he's got a 2.45 ERA. But he's going to get it up there, 94-95. He's got good stuff. He's out of Arlington Martin. He's 6-3, 210. He will look in at Riley McKnight to start the Bearcat second baseman. Top one underway. McKnight entering this contest, a 248 average. Frisia is one to watch, the shortstop in the three hole. And we discussed Robbie Rojas, the catcher, moments ago. Well, Riley McKnight's got, uh, he's got nine stolen bases. Uh, he, he, while he's not hitting great, he plays a good uh, second base, and he's uh, he's been a good leadoff hitter. Takes a lot of pitches uh, and gets some base on balls, but he, he, he'll he get six or seven pitches out of each pitcher when he gets up the at bat. Turner Larkins out of Arlington Martin High School. All four of his starts this year have been on Tuesdays. I think the thing that uh, that he needs to get over the hump as far as extending games out there. He uh, last year he averaged four uh, four innings an outing. He had 17 starts, uh, and he's uh, doing the same thing here. He. he uh, he has good stuff. He just hasn't got length into a ball game. He got himself to where he can relax and pitch. And here we go uh, with a, a base on ball, something you hate to start a ball game with. Now, he he didn't try to do that. But nonetheless, uh, in the first inning, you just want to you dream of that first pitch and, and just getting after somebody. But uh, he's got himself into a little bit of a, a bind right now. It's been up and down with the walks in recent outings. Starts off with a base on balls issued to Ryla McKnight. Now a mainstay in center field, Bryce Johnson. He's had three thirties. He's got 21 stolen bases. Uh, he is really he's he's the runner on the ball club, and he uh, he can move the runners and uh, you know he might might bunt the runner over, may hit run, controls the bat very well. Something to look at. Sam Houston State fifth in the nation in sacrifice what? bunts laid down. They do it often, may try it early. Runners going, base hit. They'll be at the corners with nobody out, an early Bearcat threat. Well, there it is. Bryce Johnson comes up with, you know, get the, get the hit and run. I think that was a hit and run. Uh, he finds a hole out there, and uh, yeah, the Bearcats turn that into a first and third situation with no outs and their uh, three-hole hitter up. Poised to take the lead, McKnight at third, Johnson at first. Larkin's in trouble without an out. 
Andrew Frije to the plate, the shortstop. Frije at 319 on the year. He's left the yard six times. He's driven in 35. Runner at first is going. Throw down to second, not in time. Two in scoring position. Well, that was just a straight single steal right there. They weren't trying to get two guys in movement. Uh, throw the ball down there and see if you can get him. He went right on the first pitch. Uh, Matt Daggs is coming right at him. He's the coach at, at Bearcats. Uh, he wants to show aggressiveness. He wants to show his team, hey, we can take it to these guys. We're going to go out there. We're going to take them our stuff. Uh, and I think coaches, when they do that, that, that that's an acceleration for the energy in a, in a ball club. Frije, a chance to drive two in after Bryce Johnson stole his 22nd base of the season. Good slider right there, 84 mile an hour slider, right where he would want to get it, get him, entice him to go for it and let, uh, let him run out of bat on it. Larkins has been pretty good in the four Tuesday starts. 2.04 ERA in those outings. It has bounced to George Johnson. He's got the runner hung up. Tag on McKnight as he dove for home plate. And another run down in between first and second. They'll have to watch closely the runner at third. Coming home, the Aggies play defense to get a big time double play. Well, that was similar to what happened uh, this past weekend at Ole Miss where a situation developed and they let the runner score from third base instead of going for him. Joel Davis had a hot eye for the runner at third base as, the, as they created the rundown. A good throw by the uh, uh, catcher down to first base. He sees that there's an open uh, spot there to get a backdoor play. A nice play, a pressure play uh, by the Aggie defense. Still a runner in scoring position as Frije went to second through all that. But now two down. Heads up defensively by the Aggies. Clayton Harp the hitter. A&M was caught by Ole Miss over the weekend with a runner going home. Yeah. A&M got an out, but it was the third out of the inning. Runners scored before they got the tag. Perhaps caught napping a bit in Oxford, very wary of what the Bearcats were up to at home in the first inning tonight. Yeah, when you saw that develop, that's exactly what I thought because I know uh, A&M went over that play uh, after the ball game and probably uh, before this ball game, a reminder of what they're gonna do in a first and third situation get runners run down we got to keep an eye, eye on the guy at third base the third baseman has got to be a, a very vocal person by saying there he goes and, uh, and, and or going or whatever terminology they choose to use uh, and Joel, Joel Davis would have the high height and awareness on that play he, he wouldn't let that uh, get out of his eyesight ground ball pass Davis the Bearcats Look to take the lead, and they will on Clayton Harp. RBI, single to right, so the Bearcats do get a run. Harp drives home, frees it. That's a well hit ball. Just think if they had, if they <laughs> had not have got that out, uh, the previous out uh, with two men on base, uh, what, what the score would have looked like at this point. Sort of a mixed bag in the first inning. The Bearcats glad to get one, but they know it could have possibly been more. Robbie Rojas, he can keep any inning alive. He steps to the plate, first pitch, a strike. Well, he's a young man. We talked about about players to watch, and this is one of this is the energy giver. He's he, he's going to create. He's going to throw punches, uh, and he's going to try to make something happen. There's the slider. Didn't get him to bite for that. Bearcats 
good record when they strike first. Runners going very aggressive in this first inning. Caught this plate hard by Cole Bedford. Well, they, they've shown aggressiveness. They've gotten after it, but they've also cost themselves some runs. And that's part of the problem. When you, when you get too aggressive, uh, sometimes it, it backfires on you. I thought, uh, I thought they had a good plan. They came out right away and made some things happen, but it also created some outs. Cats, one to nothing. The Aggies flash some leather at the top of one. The Bearcats a run, but the Aggie defense was spectacular. Could have been more for Sam Houston State in the top of one, and now A&M comes to bat. Dakota Mills is the right-handed starter. Well, of course, he was a starter last year and got a win. Uh, went six and two-thirds innings, gave up like four hits. Uh, had a tremendous outing, and he's got good stuff. He's going to throw 86 to 91. Slider changeup guy. He's a strike thrower. The critical thing for him to stay out there is he has a hard time sometimes establishing a secondary pitch. You know, he'll get his fastball in there. He can work both sides of the play with the fastball. But to get the slider and the changeup going, he's had a hard time at times getting that to work. But when he gets it going, he's a guy that can stay out there for a while. Nick Chorby leads it off. Senior with three letters, a true veteran. This is a guy that he's trying to hit 300, and he's just been fluctuating above and below that 300 line, it seems like, almost every day for about a month. Now, that's exaggeration, but <laughs> it just feels like that. No, no question about it. You know what he hit last year, don't you? 299. There you oh. go. <laughs> that's what. That's who he is. I'm a 299, not yeah. 300. Yeah. No, uh, you know he's he's had some moments where he's gone, as he did uh, Sunday two days ago, at Old Miss. Uh, I think he went three for four. Uh, he's he's a steady player. Uh, he takes a lot of pitches. He hurts himself a little bit offensively, in that he'll get himself into a bad count just because he's going to take pitches as a leadoff hitter. And uh, consequently, he gets himself into to tough spots. But a uh, good leadoff hitter has, has been a, a guy that can put pressure on the defense. Blake Chisholm, the first baseman, runs down the bag himself, three unassisted on the ground out to start Chorby and the Aggies night offensively. You know, it was interesting to watch the Bearcats come out. And of course, they, they put the ball in play and they got a walk. They did some things that allowed base runners to get on base. And, and then they started throwing punches. I, I mean, they absolutely put some pressure and see if they could put the uh, the, the Aggies in a bad spot. And the Aggies responded. Uh, it was a pretty interesting first inning. Logan Foster to the plate. Going back to that double play, AM turned in the top of one. The scoring, if you're wondering, <laughs> it would go five to three to six to three to two. All that to turn a double play, and it was a big one. And everybody who possessed the ball had to be heads up the entire yeah, time. Yeah, they had to be in the game, and they had to keep an eye on that runner at third base. And the thing that made it interesting for us is that the play came up. It, it fell into place like uh, like that with the men on first and third. Run down, run down turns into a run down between first and third, or first and second, and the runner scores before they uh, tag the runner out. And I'm sure, and this is one of the things about the the, the season, uh, you got to keep getting better. You got to keep. You got to be one game better after each game, and by the end of the season, you've got to be 56 games better than you were if you're working to be the team you want to be. And so the Aggies learned something on Sunday. They came back and were forced into seeing if they could execute it and pull it off. So I, it was fun to watch and uh, and give the Bearcats credit because they they were absolutely uh, putting pressure on. And, making some things happen. This game is still a long way from over. We may see some more of this. <laughs> Call strike three, Dakota Mills, first two men down. Well, 
Well, Logan's hitting 300. Uh, he has uh, some strikeouts. <laughs> and, and But, you know, these freshmen that are hitting 300, and they've got quite a few of them, uh, they are really good hitters. And they're going to learn that that plate can stretch. The outside part of that black adds, adds a couple more inches on both sides. And uh, you don't see that in high school much, but when you see a pitcher out there in college that can work to that spot in the official behind the plate, the umpire, he knows he's doing it on purpose. Uh, he, they'll, those things become strikes. And uh, so you get a lot of called third strikes in your initial year uh, in. Braden Shoemake coming off a good weekend in Oxford. He was 5 for 12 in the Ole Miss series. A&M dropped 2 of 3 to the Rebels. Sam Houston State took a harder hit. They were swept by Houston Baptist over the weekend. Trying to go back up the middle. The glove comes off, but Dakota Mills able to make the throw. A smooth first inning somewhat. He can laugh about the glove popping off the left hand after he goes three up, three down to the bottom of one. Bearcats showed some aggression in the top of one. They do get a run. Matt Deggs not sitting back and watching things unfold. He had the Bearcats going. He's the head coach at Sam Houston State, and he spent some time at Texas A&M 2006 to 2011. He was an assistant here under Rob Childress. First pitch swinging, Robbie Rojas. And that is to Logan Foster in right. So Matt Deggs, he comes back to College Station, and he had the wheel turning in the first inning. Blake Chisholm is the hitter. He is first pitch swinging. That's fouled away. Well, Matt Diggs has been in several places and has, has coached very well and had a lot of success and uh, certainly has done well at Sam Houston State. Came inside and hit him. Turner Larkins has issued a walk and now plunked the batter in his first inning in the third. Larkins was a factor down the stretch a season ago for Texas A&M. They're hoping for the same in 2017. There have been times the control has gotten away from him and a base on balls and a hit batsman already. Well, in his defense slightly, uh, he, uh, he had problems last year with the same uh, setting. He, he created problems for himself. Got great stuff. He had a bone spur removed in the fall and didn't practice in the fall. Uh, he was certainly out on the field and whatnot, but wasn't able to throw. And so he got off to a slow start and hasn't really got a turn. Now, in last year, the uh, same way, he came on when they started attacking in the latter part of the season in the stretch run. He was a key guy, and he's a key guy in the playoffs. And that's what they're hoping right now, that uh, this thing will catch fire because he does have that kind of stuff. Uh, and. You know, right now he hasn't shown it, but, it, uh, you know, he could turn around from this pitch from this pitch on and, uh, and start getting himself ready for uh, for a depth into a, uh, a tournament play. Got a strikeout. His first of the night. Hunter Hearn, the victim, swinging. Two down. Think of Larkins' last three starts in 2016. They were in the SEC Tournament Championship game against Florida, in the regional title game against Minnesota, and then in one of the super regional contests against TCU. Proving to you how valuable he can yeah, be. Without question. He did pretty well in all of them. Yes, he did, and I think that's one of the things the Aggies have going for them. Should they get into the tournament and get depth into a tournament, uh, they have some really nice arms sitting on the bench. In tournament play, postseason or tournament play, there are always pitchers that step up and throw out, and they give you seven or eight innings, and they never did it the whole season. And they and I've had it done to, to us and for us 
uh, in playoffs, and uh, it's not unusual. But he would be a guy that could do that. I mean, he teases you with his stuff, uh, good stuff. Jackson Grisham is, is a young man from College Station, uh, has uh, done well at, at Sam. The DH tonight, hitting in the eighth spot. A 2-1 count as that last offering missed just outside. Bearcats got two hits and a run in the top of the first. Could have been more. Some quality Aggie defense. Some headsy plays. Kept it at just that solo run. 2-2 two, two now to Jackson Grisham. Following him will be Taylor Bean. Then you go back to the top of the Bearcat order. You hear the horn in the distance. The 7 o'clock is a bit early. Yeah, that's a southbound. Uh, it may be empty. Uh, I think the 7 o'clock one is, uh, is empty. Back up the middle, base hit. Two aboard as Grisham gets a knock. That was a nice hit, nice swing. That drove that one right up the middle. And, uh, uh, you know, that, it's a dangerous spot out there when you're pitching. You're 60 feet, 6 inches, and when you get when you release the ball, you're, you're down to about 58. And that ball came off the bat hard and almost, uh, uh, almost caught him uh, defenseless. When the bats were hot, hotter than they are now, the aluminum bats and the bat manufacturers started producing a better bat each year. Pretty soon they became so dangerous that the corner people in the infield as well as the pitcher, uh, it was too dangerous to play with them. And so they uh, they have reduced the, the uh, rebound of the ball off the bat, the exit speed, and, and that gets it back down close to what a wood bat is. Throwback. Cole Bedford trying to get Jackson Grisham. An opportunity for the Bearcats, but Turner Larkins just needs an out to retire Sam with no runs crossing in the top of two. Taylor Bean hits in the nine hole, but he carries a 3.09 average into the game. Foul right through the on deck circle. Well, he has two home runs. He's got five stolen bases. Uh, he's a, 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 it's not unusual, but it, it's a, it's not as, as, you don't see it as much. You put a good guy in the nine hole because it, if he gets on, he got a lot of hitters to move him around. And he's got some speed. Uh, but if you can, you, it, it, it's sometimes you can't afford to do that. <coughs> you just don't have enough hitters. Just missed the outside corner. A groan. Yeah, that was close. Comes over the Bluebell Park crowd. I would imagine that umpire is now telling <laughs> telling the catcher, uh, don't hold it too long. Because he held, he throws that one. And umpires don't like that because that draws the attention. Got him on the next pitch, swinging. Two Ks in that inning for Turner Larkins. Sam gets a couple of base runners, but nothing across. It is a Bearcat lead. one nothing. Sam Houston State. The Aggies coming to bat in the bottom of the second. A&M head coach Rob Childress in his 12th year at the helm of the program. A week from Monday, is selection day for the NCAA tournament field. The Aggies are trying to get in for the 11th consecutive year. Jorge Gutierrez leads off. He was four for eight in the Ole Miss series with two doubles and a homer. Cleanup spot on this Tuesday versus the Bearcats. Swing and a miss. 
Two strikeouts now for Dakota Mills. Yeah, that's a 93 mile an hour fastball. His fastball, he's doing a good job with his fastball. The other pitch, the slider is starting to come in and uh, he likes to throw that with the right hander. Uh, the left handers have a high batting average, a much higher batting average against him because his changeup, he, he doesn't get his changeup established to, to where it's sinking and, and, and uh, going away from the left hand hitter. But uh, right handers have a hard time. He's got good stuff. Blake Kopetsky's been swinging a hot bat and continues to do so. First hit of the game. For the AM Aggies. That's a nice stroke right there. Just jumped on the first pitch and drove it. It's a stroke. It's a nice stroke. Got his hands through, got his body turned well. Good pivot on the back side through the ball. Cole Bedford's hitting 313, and usually your six-hole hitter doesn't have that kind of batting average, but he is uh, he has been a guy that really has improved from last year and has hit a well over 300 uh, the whole season. Yeah, Cole Bedford, eight starts in 2016 and a 143 average. Go to 2017, his sophomore season, 32 starts and 313. Yeah. It has really been, you talk a lot about the freshman class for A&M, which is led by Shoemake. That is high in the air, and that looks like it might stay in play for Rojas. Going to be a tough catch, but he grabs it. Foul out popped up by Cole Bedford. But you talk freshmen with this A&M team, there's some seniors as well. Sophomores have been pretty good. Cole Bedford, George Johnson on the mound, Stephen Kolick, Mitchell yeah. Kilkenny. I think you're right. I think you talk about young ball club, and those guys are young because they didn't throw a whole bunch as freshmen. Uh, and so they're still, you still think of them as young kind of rookie guys, uh, but they've been here this their second year, and, and they're doing well. And that's why the, the future is so promising when you look at the freshmen and the sophomores that are getting a lot of valuable playing time right now. Uh, it certainly bodes well for uh, 2018, but no one's interested in that right now. <laughs> you won't find anyone there in the Aggie dugout interested in that. They're interested in this ball game right now and then this weekend, and they're going to see if, they, if they're going to make another tournament, uh, which I would think you, they would. They certainly would. We'll, we can talk about it a little bit later, but they, they've got the RPIs, the, the APRs, and, and all kinds of stuff that's, uh, that's looked at uh, uh, by the committee. Yeah, both of these teams hoping to make sure they are in the NCAA tournament. As Coach mentioned, we'll discuss that more later. I will tell you, Sam Houston State took a big hit in the at-large department this past weekend getting swept by Houston Baptist. We'll run down the RPIs and such later. Yeah, I, you, you. It was a tough break for Sam Houston uh, because the first of the, of the conference season, they, they were 13 and 0, I believe. And then they've lost, uh, they're, now they're 11 and 14. So they've really made a drastic change uh, and just lost some momentum. A bouncer to Blake Chisholm. Dakota Mills is through two scoreless. Bearcats a one run advantage. Midweek baseball on a Tuesday night in College Station. As you might figure, these two have gotten together quite some time. The Bearcats, all they had to do was hop on a bus and go about 50 minutes to the west on Highway 30, and they were in College Station, 131st meeting between the two schools. Well, it's a very convenient one where you don't have to miss any classes. In, uh, and so it makes it uh, very easy to, to schedule games and 
Sam Houston's always had uh, baseball, always been an important part of that uh, that university and that athletic department, as of course it has at Texas A&M. So it's a natural uh, uh, game to play. And uh, I know when I was at A&M, well, we we played three times because it was easy Tuesday ball games. Don't miss class, play, and get back home, and you don't get back home late. Got to make sure you stop though at the four way in Roan's Prairie. That's right. Either way, whether you're going east or west. <laughs> I believe if you look at the map, the only Division I school that is closer to Texas A&M than Sam is Prairie View A&M. Yeah. And yeah. I think it's by a matter of maybe three miles. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Both of them are easy teams to play as far as uh, – Travel and uh, missing class, all those things, uh, it really works out well. He came on the air and mentioned it. My partner, Mark Johnson, 21 years as the head coach at Texas A&M, five at the helm of the Bearcat program. This game's always got to mean a little bit to you when they get oh, together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I got a chance to visit with Bobby Williams, the athletic director, over 30 years. That's Sam Houston, the athletic director, the man that hired me at uh, Sam Houston. He's here for the ball game, and along with him are Don Sanders and his son. Don Sanders is a alum and has uh, contributed immensely to uh, the university, and the field is named after him. Some people call it the Don, uh, but Don Sanders Stadium, uh, and he is a part owner, was a part owner of the Astros, and uh, just a, he's a baseball buff, but. Uh, a very benevolent person has been very good to his university. Riley McKnight just flew out to center. And Bryce Johnson will come to the plate. Popped up the bunt over toward the Aggie dugout. One thing I'll say about Sam Houston State, if you haven't ventured over to Huntsville often, I mean an absolutely gorgeous campus amidst the pines over there. Yeah, it really is. You're right. And what they've also done is they've made a beautiful ballpark. They've completely turfed the whole thing. Uh, I mean, they've got everything that you want in a ballpark. It's uh, it's kind of sunken in, uh, and it's uh, in the pines of a beautiful campus. If you haven't been over there, you, you ought to go. It's, uh, it's a beautiful place. They play out of the Southland Conference, which has certainly become one of the top mid-major leagues. You think about this program, Sam Houston State, this year, you look at what McNeese has done, southeastern yeah. Louisiana. Competitive baseball over there. Another hit batsman by Turner Larkins. Bryce Johnson will run with an out. Well, John Skeeters was a longtime coach there that really established it and brought it out of the NAI where they've won they won national championships a couple of them and uh, turned it into a division one program uh, and didn't skip very much of a beat to get that done and got themselves in the southland conference great history uh, but under an outstanding coach uh, that had passion for baseball passion for his field uh, i really enjoyed uh, uh, the competition we had and it, but more than that i've enjoyed the fellowship and the friendship of, uh, of john skeeters After the hit batsman, it's Andrew Frije. <laughs> Sam Houston State, they've made the NCAA tournament seven of the last ten years. Yeah. Some of those were your ball clubs. Yeah, we were fortunate to make it. In the uh, first year, we made it. Uh, we went to, to Ole Miss and got into the final ball game. We just had a thrill. It was just uh, you know, packed house, Southeast Conference team, just a, uh, just a neat deal for the young people that I had the, the, the joy of coaching. Uh, they just really played well and played right into a, a regional uh, tournament. Honor is going, Bearcats stay aggressive. This is a fly to right. Logan Foster makes the catch. He'll try to throw back to first base, maybe a play, not quite. Back standing up is Bryce Johnson. Yeah, uh, Bryce Johnson, of course, is a base stealer. Could have been going on his own, but it appeared a little bit like a hit and run, but it wasn't a hit and run swing. So I'm just thinking the green light was on to run, the green light was on to swing, 
and uh, and that's what it created a uh, long fly ball and, uh, and Foster got behind it Foster's got a pretty good arm uh, so almost turned into a play Logan Foster the freshman from Lincoln Nebraska he's in right rest of the Aggie outfield Nick Chorby in center and Blake Kopetsky in left Clayton Harp drove in the only run of the game in the first inning he bats now and a check of Bryce Johnson well you certainly have to you would bet that Bryce Johnson is going to steal he stole the first time he got on and he's got 22 22 stolen bases now so he, he likes to go and Got a left-hand hitter up there. Might get a good jump. A little bit harder for the catcher to throw. And they're watching him close. Twenty-two out of twenty-nine this year. Bryce Johnson on his theft attempts. Another check. Well, these checks are with diff different rhythm, different holding pattern. So he's trying to keep him from getting a. A jump because you have a pattern out there on the mound. You may hold the ball for three seconds, and then the next time you hardly ever you just change directions and then come to home. Uh, so you do all you can to keep him close. Pitch out. Texas A&M's middle infielders Austin Holman at shortstop and Braden Shoemaker at second base. They've shifted toward the pull a little bit. Holman's near the bag and Shoemake has shaded himself over toward the line at first base. Well, Clayton Harp uh, pulled the ball to right field last time up and they may have, their book may say that's what he does. He likes to pull the ball. Joel Davis dropped the baseball for just a moment. Close play at first base. <laughs> Up the middle, and Chorby is there. Bearcats get a base runner, they strand him at first. One nothing. Cats from the end. Bearcats got their run in the first. Ex, uh, the Aggies of Texas A&M, they have a hit, but they've been sat down for the most part in the first two innings by Dakota Mills. Last season, late in the year, midweek contest here in College Station. The Bearcats no, shut out A&M 5 to nothing on the heels of a strong start by Mills. He went six and two-thirds. Got the Cats well into that game. Well, he's throwing in the lower 90s tonight, and he's 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 getting that that slider to the right hinders. He's doing a pretty good job of keeping that outside on the outside part of the plate. Austin Holman, first man up, bottom three foul territory onto the East Lawn. Good contingent out there and all across the ballpark on this Tuesday night. Well, Austin Holman's got it hit 356 last year, probably a little bit over his head. He's a little bit under right now. He got off to a real slow start, but the, the back half of the season has been good to him. But he's up to about a 250 batting average, and he was down below 200 for a little bit. So he's really got, I wouldn't say hot, but he has really got back to who he is and put the ball in play. He's a singles doubles guy, and he can run, and uh, he's an excellent base runner. He's a, a risk taker. Dakota Mills, the right-hander out of Meadows Place, Texas, went to Dulles High School down around the Sugarland area. Blinn Junior College before going to Sam Houston State. Fly ball center field. Bryce Johnson to grab one out. Bottom of the order now and George Yancha. But the book on Mills is He's not going to walk you a whole lot. He ranks in the top 25 nationally in least amount of walks allowed and strikeout to base on ball ratio. So you're going to have to earn it against this righty. 
strike to George Johnson to begin his count. Well, the first thing the scouting report says on him, he, this guy's a strike thrower. And all coaches like strike throwers. And when you've got one for Tuesdays uh, that can throw in the, in the low 90s and he's got a pretty good slider, uh, you say, yeah, I'm taking that guy. And there was a slider. He just missed outside on it, and that's the pitch that he's going to try to tease him for. Took a little bit off that pitch. And Yancha stroked it on the ground into center. Single yeah. and two hits this evening for that, A&M. That was his changeup, 84 miles an hour. He hadn't thrown that a whole lot. Uh, and it, it's it's straight. It's a fairly straight. Most people, uh, their changeup is going to sink to arm side. Uh, and he doesn't get a run on his, but, uh, but he does use it. Pass to diving Andrew, Andrew Frije, the shortstop. One out base runner, top of the order, Nick Chorby. Chorby went five for 13 in the Ole Miss series. Had a great finale versus the Rebels. Base hit here. Yonch is rounding second. Appears to be Aggies at the corners with one down. And it is. Yeah, nice stroke. Uh, that ball hard to right field. Moved one up to third base. But you're right, he had a, an outstanding weekend in the conference play. And certainly on, on uh, Sunday was his big day. But, uh, he, he really hit well. Good turn by Yancha. Best opportunity of the night for AM thus far. Tying run 90 feet away. Logan Foster's going to come to the plate. We will get a meeting on the mound. It's head coach Matt Deggs out to talk to Dakota Mills. So first and third, two hole hitter up. Mills struck out Foster looking in the first inning. Yeah. Well, this is what you want. You want two, three, four, you're up. You got two men on base. You got no outs to work with, or one out, uh, but you got two to work with. And so, uh, you know, you hope that, uh, that you might be able to create something. Bearcats have a little bit of action in the bullpen. It is Riley Cooper. He's from Texas City. So for the first time tonight, Dakota Mills. Some traffic on the paths. Bouncer foul toward the Aggie dugout. Logan Foster was first pitch swinging. Yancha singled, went to third on the same, a single by Nick Chorby. Austin Holman started this inning with a fly ball to center. And now Logan Foster hopes to at least tie the game. An early situation. Pitch out, nothing doing. Well, you always have the chance for first and third here, and you got your uh, one of your leading base dealers on first base. Got nine, sto ten stolen bases, uh, could go, uh, but you also have a hitter that can uh, he can he can hit doubles uh, without too much trouble. One and two to the Aggie right field of the freshman out of Lincoln, Nebraska. Certainly has some pop, five home runs this year. All told, 22 extra base hits on the season for Logan Foster. And a swing and a miss. Dakota Mills has struck him out twice. That a big one. Well, you got Braden Shoemake coming, left-hand hitter. Uh, and you, uh, you wonder whether you should steal or not, but you want to leave that hole over there for him. Um, and you don't want to run into a third out. Uh, and 
I'm going to say this, but the Aggies uh, don't don't steal a lot of bases, and, and this isn't one that I've seen him do a lot of a lot of running in. And I don't know if that's wrong. And, uh, you know, he uh, when you got Shoemaker up there, you like your chances. And when you think about Shoemaker, you think about 61 RBIs. You think he likes to hit with men in base, and he likes to chase them home. One of the top marks in the SEC as far as runs driven in. That's a call strike, one and one. That's a good take. That's a good pitcher's pitch. Uh, work the outside part. That's a, a corner pitch. Two and one. One of the things about Shoemaker, you look at the outfield and where they're playing, they have to spread out because he can go both ways. He can go both ways with doubles power and some of it with home run power. So they really spread out, which opens up gaps. Uh, they can't cheat to one side a whole lot. Inside, that almost hits Shoemaker. His first at bat hit the ball hard right at the pitcher, Dakota Mills. Mills was able to block it, lost his glove in the process, but managed to throw out Braden Schumann. And a 3-1 count. That is hit at the second baseman. The flip to the shortstop to end the inning. A&M a threat to no avail. one nothing Cats through three. Bearcats with a lead and they're trying to get back on track. They were swept by Houston Baptist over the weekend and in all likelihood that cost them a chance at an at-large bid. They have slipped to 77th in the RPI. Selection committee looks at who's hot and Sam Houston State has lost their last two series. Now they have one more on the conference slate this weekend with Incarnate Word. But a lot of the metrics are okay when it comes to Sam Houston State. Here's a bouncer by Rojas to Austin Holman, and there's one out. Problem is, Sam Houston State, there's just not going to be enough RPI out there that you're against to get you back toward the top 50. That's really where you have to be to like your at-large chances. So the way it looks right now, Coach, Sam Houston State, when they go to Sugarland in a couple of weeks, in all likelihood, they have to win the Southland Conference Tournament. Yeah, I, I had a chance to talk to Coach Deggs before, and he feels that way. He feels like, uh, but he feels like they can do it, and they can get hot because they have been hot uh, prior to uh, this downfall halfway through the conference where they started started losing. They were 14-0 and going in, uh, I mean, as far as in the first 14 games of conference. So, they can make a run in the tournament, and he believes they can do that. They just, they got to get the bats going and, and pitch well and all the things that everybody's talking about. That was a well-hit ball uh, by Blake Chisholm uh, into left field, but uh, they do have a chance. Uh, and the problem you have is you get into conferences that don't travel a lot, and they can't travel, they can't, they don't have big uh, uh, enticements to bring other teams in to come play. Uh, Consequently, that their schedule can't be as good as they'd like it to be. You'd like it to be, but that means McNeese, that means all of the teams in Nickel State, all of those teams, they have to do the same thing also or your RPI is going to advance. So if you're in a league that doesn't do that, then you're you're at the mercy of, of having to win uh, championships uh, and get the at-large bid. Sam Houston State, they were right around 60 in the RPI before the HBU series. If you can win it, you stay close to that top 50 threshold. But they were swept, fell back to 77. Incarnate Word is the final Southland series, but the Cardinals are well behind 200 in the RPI. That won't yeah. help a whole lot. No, they won't gain ground. And sometimes just by playing the game, you lose, you lose points just as you also can win points. And they could win, they're winning points right now just by playing the Aggies, whether you win or lose. Uh, it helps in their RPI. 
Quick inning for Turner Larkins, a much needed one. He has now sat down five Bearcats in a row. A&M due up, trailing by a run, going to the bottom of four. A&M down one to nothing. They're looking to make the NCAA tournament for the 11th consecutive year, 35 and 17 overall, 15 and 12 in the SEC. Struggling against the top 25 in the RPI, but you saw 16 and 16 against the top 100 in the ratings power index. A lot of the metrics look good with the Aggies, and I don't think you have to dig too far on some teams when they play in the SEC. If you're at 35 wins at this point in the year, if you have a winning record in the SEC, in all likelihood that is enough to get you into the baseball dance. That's a bounce out, although Blake Chisholm struggled with that ground ball. It was off the bat of Jorge Gutierrez. But the thing for Texas A&M is they're almost in, if you ask me, and we'll, we'll kind of show you where the SEC stands as a whole later in the game. Another look at that bounce out by Gutierrez. Chisholm, despite bobbling the ball, got to the bag first. But I, I just think, Coach, if, if you look at a team that has into the mid-30s in wins, close to 40, and they've got a winning record in the SEC, to me, when I'm the committee, I don't have a whole lot to think about there. No, I think you're right. I, I think there's credibility within the Southeast Conference. Obviously, the RPI of the, of the conference is just extremely well uh, well taken. But uh, I, I'm with you. I, I think uh, in this day and age, it's getting harder and harder to dominate a conference. And so you say, well, geez, you know, the Aggies, uh, they haven't uh, won 25 ball games in the conference or, you know, some – unbelievable number but that, that those days are over I, I just think uh, there's so much parity out there that the numbers that we used to go by aren't quite as off, as authentic as uh, as they were but I think they've earned their spot I mean they've got enough W's uh, uh, there's no question in, the, in this conference to to win the number of series at home and on the road uh, that they have uh, but you know you need to finish strong you need to have a, a good finish and I think uh, finishing up against Arkansas will be a good test for the Aggies. Certainly could push them right over the hump. Um, there's a fly ball. It's going to land right here in front of us. And I don't think the fans made the play. No, no, there wasn't any applause. And everyone looked like they are dodging bullets up there. But uh, nonetheless, I, I think, uh, you know, there's still a lot of game in front. And when you look at the where we're lining up in the conference, there's three games separating, what, nine nine teams or, or a whole bunch of teams. So uh, this weekend's going to make a difference. And then, of course, as you get into the tournament play, that plays. Fly to right to end the inning. Hunter Hearn takes care of the lofted ball off the bat of Cole Bedford. A one to nothing Bearcat lead. Pitching strong on Tuesday night. Top five now. Only run of the game came home in the first inning. Sam Houston State got an RBI single from Clayton Harp. Scored Andrew Frije. Bearcats, fourth place in the Southland Conference. They have clinched a spot in the SLC tournament in a couple of weeks. McNeese and Southeast Louisiana. Now they sit very well in the RPI and they are in the running for at-large bids, the Cowboys and the Lions. Yeah, I, I think McNeese is, they're in a, a spot where they can pull this thing off and win the championship and get the at-large bid. Uh, Houston Baptist, of course, kind of interesting. They got kind of hot in, uh, in Southeast Louisiana has played consistently. Um, so Sam Houston's kind of there. They're, they're going to have to, you know, they're going to have to win that tournament. And in the Southland Conference, it's, uh, you know, until they went to 64 games, it, it was it was just going to be the uh, the champion. Nobody else got a chance. He had a large pin. And uh, because the conference has picked up and uh, and has started uh, their improved their RPIs against other people, uh, they have gotten more than one in the, into the tournament uh, recently. Jackson Grisham singled his first time up. That was in the second inning. Turner Larkins has sat down four cats in a row. 
Well, you know, they came out, and they kind of used the, the, the analogy. They came out punching that first inning. Boy, there was a lot of action and traffic, and now there's just a little shadow boxing going on. The pitchers have, have really slowed things down and, and taken control, and we've had some quick innings. In fact, Grisham, that hit in the second is the last knock by a Bearcat hitter. And that was a well-hit ball in the center field. He, he really drove that ball well. Good pitch on the inside corner. Wasn't much Grisham would have been able to do with that had he swung. No, no, that was high velocity in his hands. I think that's where they would like to get him. High and away, and a full count. Big pitch coming to the leadoff hitter in the top of the fifth. Now well, Larkins has now walked two and hit two. The control has not been there at times. Lead man aboard. And Sam Houston State will send Taylor Bean to the plate. Well, it's frustrating because, of course, he's trying all he can, but you walked uh, the leadoff hitter who happens to be a 200 hitter on his batting average, and now you've got to face a 309 uh, hitter, and then, it, then the top of the order comes. So that was an out that you really wanted to get, and a lot of times in the ball games, it's not the, the top hitters that win them. It, it's what you do with the bottom part of the order, whether you let them be a factor in the outcome of games. And the good pitchers, they're going to lose some battles between the – the two, three, four, five pole hitters, but they're going to take they're going to take their uh, their shots and, and win the victories uh, with the other hitters. Sacrifice bunt. This is what Sam Houston State does a lot. Everybody gave way, and there's nobody out. Well, that's where Yonch uh, has got to take that ball. He's got to really just yell and get everybody out of the way. It's not an easy play for the third for the. Uh, catcher who's got to do a reverse pivot and throw to first and the, the pitcher didn't get aggressive on it the easiest play is for the third baseman who comes in face can face first base and is your better athlete at that play but uh, it didn't take charge enough and uh, let the ball die it was an excellent bunt Bearcats fifth in the nation and sacrifice bunts laid down tried another one but A&M never picked the ball up well, Bryce Johnson is a guy that can lay the ball down, too, and he's got good speed, hard man to double up uh, and to get at first base. If you kind of look over, see, and if you have the ball in your hand and you start looking around where the play is, you better watch out because he'll get to first base before you get another look. Bearcats also second nationally in triples, and we play in a ballpark tonight that can be prone to them. The Aggies have hit their share of triples, too. Showing bunt again. It's Riley McKnight, the leadoff hitter. Cole Bedford taking some time. The Aggies do have action in their bullpen. That is just cranked up. down. Yancha threw high, but got McKnight two in scoring position as Grisham and Bean move up. Nice bunt uh, by McKnight, got the job done, uh, came to third base, forced the third baseman to get off the bag and come get it. Coach Childers is now coming out. He's got uh, John Dexakis in the bullpen warming up left-hand pitcher. Good job. Well, one to nothing, Sam Houston State lead. They'll have Bryce Johnson coming to the plate and Grisham and Bean in scoring position. Well, he's going to take some time. He's going to, he's given uh, Doc some uh, time to get, to get ready. The freshman left-hander. Home plate umpire 
Jet Minton is out there. Asks the Aggies to speed things up. Four hits tonight for Sam Houston State. Three by A&M. Johnson, he has singled and been hit by a pitch. But the Aggies are playing the, uh, the infield with the corners even up with the bag uh, to try to discourage the, uh, a safety squeeze or a squeeze play. The infield is playing in double play depth, or, but they're not, uh, they're not deep. And they haven't got a double play set up, but they're not deep. Breaking ball, missed well to the outside. Bearcat center fielder with a chance to pad the lead. Two and one. Foul ball, two balls, two strikes. Larkins, a chance for a big out. Potentially one strike away, but a tough hitter. And Bryce Johnson, he looks in at. Block by yeah. Cole Bedford. Big block. Your man on third base got to got to really go all out. Well, uh, Bryce Johnson, they they've got a, a base open uh, to set up the double play at each, any bag, and so they're they're not just going to lay one down the middle of the plate. They're going to force him to swing at one of their pitches. That's the game plan, I'm sure. Bouncing ball back up the middle, base hit. It'll be three to nothing. Back. Uh, no, it's got smoke too soon because the runner around third fell down. Taylor Bean was going to score. He went to the turf as he rounded third base. I thought he might have missed third base. I was watching him and uh, thought he might have missed third base. But he, he did slip and fall. Jackson Grisham does score. Single RBI by Bryce Johnson. He's got two hits tonight. Johnson has not been out yet. And then when Taylor Bean was coming around third, did he? I think he barely got third, but then went to the turf, yeah. and that cost Sam Houston State their third run of the game. Still could get it with Frisia batting. Well, they still, they've got their three, four, and five hole hitters up, the guys that are supposed to be able to run, drive this run in. And of course, the, the double play is in order. And the, the possibility of, uh, of the offense running a first and third are out there. I think Diggs likes to run a, a hard offense. Here goes a run. Okay, it's a fake to second. Look at third base to see if the guy is going on a double steal. Takes, it, uh, takes a and M out of the, the uh, double play situation. And now we'll see where the infields play. Uh, the corners are going to be in. We'll see if the middle uh, plays halfway again. Matt Deggs, the head coach, also runs the offense from third base. He just had a quick word with Frije. 
chance for some cushion. Playing the infield back, Joel uh, uh, Davis is at first base. Not too sure where they want him. He's playing in. Mm. Yeah, Davis is, is definitely in. And uh, Yonch is back uh, behind the, uh, the base path. It's a little bit odd. Was that? Uh, but they got their three-hole hitter where they want to give that bat up to uh, try a safety squeeze or not. Uh, he's a guy that uh, he's hitting 319. He's got 35 RBIs, which is second on their team. Uh, they, they may want to make him hit, or, or they may want him to hit and not try a, a bunt, and that's what the Aggies may be thinking uh, with the third baseman back. Good block by Bedford on a slider down. So a walk and two hits this inning. Sam Houston State's got the 2 nothing advantage. A run already home in the fifth. 2-1 count to Frigier. They're pitching him careful, and uh, should he lose him walking, uh, I would think the left-hander in the bullpen, Dox Axis, would come in to face the left-hander, uh, Clayton Harp. Bouncing ball. They'll get the third run of the game. Holman throws out three, Jay. He gets an RBI. 3-0. So Bean fell down on the single. He does get to come home on the bouncer by Friesen. Jonah's going to come out and get Doc Texas uh, out of the bullpen. and uh, He's a guy that, uh, you know, they, they uh, has been hot and cold. He's got really good stuff, left-handed stuff. He's, he can power pitch. Got a little bit. He doesn't have, he's not over the top. He's a little bit on the three-quarter slide. Comes across his uh, body a little bit tough on the left-handers, uh, but he's got a 4.67 ERA. He has 44 innings pitched, so he's been out there quite a bit. And he's got 45 uh, strikeouts with that. His problem is the 21 base on balls, and that's uh, that's what has kept him from being the guy. Uh, he's got a tremendous future, uh, but he's a guy, as we mentioned earlier, that you get into a tournament postseason to play. This guy, if he catches fire. He has got stuff. And, of course, I, I, Coach Childers is asking him to come up and face the left hand and get out of this inning. Don't make it a big inning. Uh, so we'll see what he can do. Bearcats have the lead. Looking for more. Coach, the Aggies trying to keep the deficit at just 3 nothing, and they call on John Doxakis. Well, he's got the stuff. Uh, there's no question. And they've, they've, he's, uh, like I said earlier, he's, he has four, 44 innings pitch. So they have gone to him quite a bit. He, he's got 19, 19 appearances. So he's been a go-to guy. And he's got a chance to go left on left right now uh, with uh, Clayton Harp. Well, the Aggie bullpen, it's been there for him in these midweek games. Texas A&M has experienced great success on these Tuesday Wednesday contests and much of the reason is that bullpen they call on John Doxakis. So Clayton Harp tonight a single an RBI and a fly to center. He's got Bryce Johnson running at third base. one count he really does a tremendous job probably as good as anybody on the team at getting to glove side in other words he drops down and he gets all the way on the other side of the plate with the ball most guys will leave it more middle in on their, their throwing side but he gets on the outside part really well 
Look at what the A&M bullpen has done in midweek games this year. I mean, they've got a 10-0 record, 1.36 ERA, and opponents only hit wow. them at 171. Wow. Much of the reason for the Tuesday, Wednesday success of the Aggies. Well, I think when you have a good pitching staff, the Tuesday ball game belongs to the pitchers. A lot of times the hitters have been played three ball games over the weekend, and they don't get as excited about playing. There's a good base. There's a base hit that falls in. He got in on the hands, uh, but Clayton Harp stayed on it and muscled it right on out in there to pick up the RBI. He's now got two hits and two RBIs, four to nothing, Cats, as Bryce Johnson comes home. Starting to build a hill for the Aggies to climb. Well, and Harp has got uh, six stolen bases, so he's not somebody you just let go. Uh, he's a guy that can get down there. That'll end the night and close the book on Turner Larkins. He'll give up four runs in four and two-thirds innings. Bearcats got one in the first and three here in the fifth. The balk call. Yeah, didn't come down. He, he, he didn't stop. I think he just started forward before he uh, got to a complete stop. Clayton Hart moves up. Rojas with an 0-1 count as the 8 o'clock is early as well, and it rolls northbound. Rojas to left, going back at the wall. Goodbye. Robbie Rojas, 2-1 shot. Sam has blown it open, 5 in the inning, and they've got a 6-0 lead. Well, that was a well-hit ball, and that's not his first home run. He's, he has three home runs. He's come up with a big one right there with two outs. The Aggies have not been able to shut uh, the Bearcats down. Good stroke, pounded it yeah. over the left field wall. Also scores Clayton Harp. Six to nothing. A five run fifth. Chisholm has a one one count on him now after that foul ball. AM in February and March. They allowed a team to score six or more nine times in those two months. See what the Bearcats had. They like this inning. Middle of the game, fifth. Yeah. They've probably been able to break open a few contests with a good fifth frame. But going back to the Aggies, nine times they allowed six or more runs in a game in February and March. In April and May, it didn't happen a single time until Saturday against Ole Miss. Now it has happened on Saturday, Sunday, and Tuesday. Pitching has been excellent for Texas A&M the last couple of months. And six runs in a game isn't necessarily an indictment on them. No, what, what you talk about in the, in the dugout now is, is they've got to start just picking up a run or two. Uh, they don't try to get six in one inning, and that's what young people particularly, they, they think, boy, we got to get six runs, Let's, you know, and they try to hit an eight-run home run or something, and, and they just try too hard. They just pick up a couple and then get into the bullpen because you don't know who's home in the bullpen on Tuesday. Uh, and so somebody may come in and just open up the game for you, but just like they might come in and, and, and shut the door. But uh, that's what you fight for on a Tuesday 
is to uh, because the pitching stats usually have been been tried pretty hard on the weekend. Chisholm's gone down the line and left. That will twist foul. Well, Chisholm is battling good right here. This is a good battle, and he's he's battling off 90, 93 and 94 mile an hour fastballs, and he's staying on him. He's had some pretty good swings. Uh, again, uh, you, you look at uh, Doc Akins, and it, he throws to glove side. He leaves balls out over the plate. I know they want to get a fastball in on him. They left it out over the plate again. Shorty nice. on the run. Well hit ball right there. That was a good at bat uh, by Blake Chisholm. You give him credit. Yeah, he did a good job. Home run by Robbie Rojas. Two run shot. Five run inning. Six nothing. Bearcat lead. Southland leads the SEC. Six nothing. On this Tuesday night, we're halfway home. A and M. Well, the Aggies, they've got some work to do in this one. Let's take a look at the SEC's outlook at the NCAA tournament. You could call five teams a lock right now. Florida, Kentucky, LSU, Arkansas, and Mississippi State. A&M and Vanderbilt, they, they're right at the door knocking on it. They just need to step in and lock it. Vanderbilt has played the number one schedule in the nation. That's why they look good as far as getting to the NCAAs. Auburn and Ole Miss in South Carolina, they have fallen behind the eight ball somewhat, although the Ole Miss RPI is good. Auburn has struggled mightily as of late. South Carolina's 12 and 15 in conference. The Rebels, Tigers, and Gamecocks, I feel, all have work to do. Missouri there with slim hopes. Missouri, in all likelihood, will be left out of the NCAA tournament, but there is a chance they could get into the top 50 in the RPI. And I'm not ready to throw an SEC team aside that could still do that. That is just foul off the bat of Joel Davis. But one thing to look at in this final weekend coming up in SEC play is Auburn and Ole Miss are against each other. It is possible. It's not far-fetched to say that that's sort of an NCAA tournament play-in series. Yeah. And, I mean, what a far cry Auburn was a few weeks ago. Well, you know, they got off to a good start. South Carolina got off to a good start. Uh, yeah, I mean, there were, it, it's funny how it changes, and all of a sudden they're fighting to get in a tournament uh, when they do have some. It's, and, and they've had, to, granted, they've had some injuries, but they're both good teams. Ole Miss made, made up some ground this weekend. But, you know, this weekend, it's, it, and, of course, it comes down to this every year. You come to what's just three more games for everybody. And that's going to turn it upside down, possibly. <laughs> and as you alluded to, uh, certainly there are some things that could happen that could change that NCAA as they look at it and look, and, and then they start matching up who beat who. And uh, somebody late in the season came on strong, won a two out of three battle, and uh, they. You started when you're on that committee. I'm not. I've never been on the committee. I've talked to people that are. And you start looking for edges right at the end. I mean, it's just a flip of the coin. And so you try to find out something. And heads up competitions, one of them or you, you know, you just start finding things. You don't want to have to make a, uh, just an educated guess. You want to get a, an edge somewhere. Uh, so it gets real, real tough to select the final group in. But I think the Southeast Conference is going to be in that position with some of their teams. Fly to left, Clayton Harp. First out of the fifth. So if you look at these teams, selection Monday is 13 days away. I think the winner of the Auburn Ole Miss series is likely in. The loser of that series still could be in, but I'm going to tell you, they're going to change shirts two or three times on selection Monday. They'll sweat so much. <laughs> Yeah, that is true. I think you're right on that. Off the bat of Austin Holman. A tough catch. Made it tougher than it needed to be. Riley McKnight looking up into that twilight sky. Yeah, and there's some wind blowing out. And, uh, and it's picked up a little bit. There's a pretty good breeze going out. Uh, and he didn't play the wind. The, the, the trick in playing the wind is catch the ball coming into the wind. So you get behind the ball and you move towards uh, the wind and he's moving with the wind and, and that's where you where he didn't get far enough back that was definitely his ball that wasn't the right pillars ball oh. 
Yancha first pitch swinging and same, this same ball. looks to be a very quick fifth. Oh, gee. The Aggies cannot solve Dakota Mills. It is six to nothing. Bearcats. Bearcats made the short trip over to College Station. They're making quick work of the Aggies. Big fifth inning. Got RBIs from Bryce Johnson and Clayton Harp. And then a two-run homer from Robbie Rojas. Cat six. Ags nothing. Third pitcher of the night on for Texas A&M. It's Landon Miner, hometown kid out of Bryant. Yeah, he sure is, and he's done well. He's, he's got a 2.78 ERA. He's only got 22 innings pitch, but he's a strike thrower. He's got 15 strikeouts. Teams are hitting 188 off him. He's got an excellent changeup. He's a fastball changeup guy. He's got plenty of velocity to keep him honest. He's going to be, and of course, he's another one you look at and say, man, this guy's going to be great before he leaves uh, the grounds of Olsen Field. Landon Miner is on, and Hunter Hearn is the first man he faces. That goes foul at third base. Well, this is the final week of the regular season. We're talking RPI, we're talking NCAA tournament. That is the discussion that's happening all over the country. You alluded to it a little earlier for Texas A&M that they do need to close strong. And that's really the, all that's left to do. The metrics look good. Yeah. I mean, when you're 35 and 17 and you're 15 and 12 in the SEC, that looks very good to a selection committee. But you, you start to think about a few hiccups there the Aggies have lost their last two weekend series. Yep. If you don't come back tonight, possible another knock. Arkansas is going to be a tough series this weekend. Yeah. You, you just don't want to give them something to think about. Exactly. And if you don't close strong, uh, they're going to look at that as well. Strikeout by Landon Miner against Hunter. Well, you can just imagine if you're on that committee, you're looking for reasons to keep somebody or to eliminate somebody. you got to get down to the numbers. And you, you can't pull this one off tonight. You can't come back. Now, Sam Houston's not a bad ball club. They have played well, and they pitched well tonight. But you come back, and then you don't punch out Arkansas for a little bit and show a pretty good uh, showing there. And uh, and then you can, it gets a little bit iffy. But uh, I think I just, uh, in the back of my mind, I just think the Aggies have a chance once they get in the tournament, if they can get some depth in a tournament, to, to step forward and, 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 and do it because of their pitching. Jackson Grisham. Yeah, that, that's the thing. Even before getting to the tournament, you feel like the Aggies in this last week of the regular season, a win or two may lock it up. And it yeah. may just be a done deal by the time they get to Hoover. Exactly. Arkansas, and that's a great thing to get by getting to play at home against an Arkansas ball club, a highly ranked team. And that's a that's an that's an attention getter to the committee, when you if you can punch it out there, and pick up something. And that, I think that's just the short end of it for A and M. I mean, the bottom line is the the only reason you don't call Texas A and M a lock right now, is because they've lost their last two series. Yeah. Now they're both series. Yeah. That could have gone either way, a play here or a play there, and they're both against good teams in Mississippi State and Ole Miss. Oh yeah. But the Aggies are in good shape. Finish. And the big question always is how many does this conference get in? Probably five are locked in. AM and Vanderbilt right there on the cusp. And we told you about three teams with work to do Auburn, Ole Miss, and South Carolina. Does one, two, or all three of them make it? Well, you know, the, the word's gotten out a little bit that 15's a magic number. And, uh, you know, it used to be, uh, you know, different. Uh, but what I tried to say the other, uh, a little earlier was simply that 
there's so much parity. A, a magic number is not fair. It's changed since 10 years ago. It's changed since 15 years ago. Uh, and that's because teams are better. And so it makes it tougher to, uh, or, or there, there's more, I, I won't say necessarily better, because we don't have any real blue, blue chip ones out there except Oregon State. And, well, and, 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 and Louisville, North Carolina, I mean, those guys are good. If you're, if you're under uh, double figures in, in losses, you, you're, you've proved yourself pretty good. But there aren't as many teams like that. And so the magic number is, who knows, uh, as you compare the apples and oranges all over the country, and you look at the, you know, the, 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 the pack uh, teams, you say, well, golly, you know, they really, there's, there's nothing great there. But uh, somebody's got to go because you, you haven't got a whole bunch of guys that got, you know, 41 wins or something. These are 30 wins except for three teams, I believe. There's a good sinking uh, fastball right there. Got down underneath his hand, two seamer. Taylor being the hitter with Jackson Grisham running at first base. Bouncing at Yancha. He'll try to get two. Nice Got play it. by Joel Davis. Nice play. Ball and dirt picked it up. Nice play. That was a hard du double play. Second twin killing turned by the Aggies tonight. The first one was brilliant glove work and headsy play. This one of the 5 4 3 variety. AM still got a hill to climb. It's a good Tuesday night crowd. Graduation has come and gone. In between that time when classes are out, summer school's about to crank up, but plenty of students here. Come out in numbers to College Station for the midweek. However, what they're seeing is a Bearcat 6 nothing lead. Yeah, I, you know, it, it, as soon as school's out, it thins down out of the road. Boy, I mean, it, it really thins down. Uh, but there's a good crowd here tonight. They're watching another masterpiece by Dakota Mills. Yeah. Second year in a row against the Aggies. Well, if he went six and two thirds uh, last year, gave up four hits and shut him out. Uh, and he's getting close to those numbers right now. He's only given up three hits and he's throwing strikes. He's a strike thrower and he has established the slider. The slider's a pitch and change up here. Let's see what he does with Torby with, Torby with a change up. There's a slider down and in. He threw that one at 88. Now he's been throwing his fastball at 92, 93. But the left handers are the ones he has trouble with. Got him. Look yeah. it. Well, the first, the one in front of that one was close. <laughs> that one was right there on the money. So now Dakota Mills in this one has thrown five and a third scoreless. Go back to last year, and he's thrown 12 consecutive shutout innings against Texas A&M. Wow. That is his fourth strikeout of the night, his first since the third inning. He has struck out Logan Foster both times he's faced him. Yeah, he got him again right on the corner to get ahead of the count. I think he's going to try the, the pitch. He'd like to get him in. Uh, he'd like to get him one as a slider outside. Uh, or if he if he misses there, the fastball in. And a slider over the plate, a little high. Well, he's a fast worker. He gets up there and uh, he just, he's ready to go. Uh, those are the kind of guys defense likes to play behind. Strike throwers that work fast. Keep it right in the ball game. There's another pitch. Strike. 
Both strikeouts this inning looking. Foster has K'd all three times. Well, this is a good pitch. This is one you got to swing at. <laughs> yeah, with two strikes, you got to give some ground. You got to widen that plate a little bit. But that was that was a pitcher's in this. In, that was a pitcher's pitch. First pitch swinging, Braden Shoemaker, and I mean fourth, fifth, and sixth inning. Dakota Mills is taking a matter of minutes. I mean, only a few of them got the dispatch of the Aggies. Six nothing, Sam, and they are trying to stay hot on the midweek themselves. Five wins in a row on Tuesday, and some pretty good victims. Yeah. Baylor, three Tuesdays in a row they defeat Houston, and then Dallas Baptist last time out on midweek. You add Texas A&M to that list for six in a row. Matt Deggs and the Bearcats, they're going to have to just keep playing on Tuesdays. That's right. <laughs> well, they got to switch that rotation on the yeah, weekend. Exactly. <laughs> well, you know, I think he's got Casey Sherrod in the ball game. He's got a 2.997 ERA. 33 innings pitch, 32 strikeouts, but his, like some of the other ones, he's got 20 base on balls, and so he's got strike him out stuff. He's got a slider that's really good, and he too can can power pitch. He can throw it up to 95, and he's got it. It's what you call when you're up at the plate. It's get after your stuff, and he's not a comfortable guy. Uh, he comes at you. His body makeup uh, just kind of a little bit jerky, and it looks like he's he's coming right at you. Throws a little bit across himself. Riley McKnight is the hitter. First man to face Sherrod. A 2 1 count. AM this weekend will host the Arkansas Razorbacks. Chopped, and that is foul. The SEC schedule maker got it right because top two teams in the West are LSU and Mississippi State. They're head to head this weekend. Yep. Top two teams in the East, Florida and Kentucky, and they face off Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Yancha, and now he shows off that arm. Nice play, nice play. Well, he uh, hit at third base last time up. Uh, did not, not as hard, and Yancha made a nice play on that to stop it. Of course, he's got the plus arm, got it down there. Now you got Bryce Johnson, who, who can run, can get down that line. Bryce Johnson has two hits and two RBIs. He has not recorded an out yet. In between his two singles, he was hit by a pitch. Talked a lot about the NCAA tournament, but for this last weekend in the SEC, you got to think about Hoover, too. Yes, sir. Conference yes, tournament sir. We'll crank up soon after. Well, it's still wide open. Who's going to get the buys, you know, and, and I, I think probably the last two teams are fairly uh, fairly well decided, but uh, boy, the, the, the four buys is just going to be interesting, now, but it's all going to come down this weekend. But that tournament sets up. I like the way the tournament is. It, it doesn't give a, uh, it gives an advantage to the teams that have done well throughout the year and not just on one weekend of a tournament. And I like that. Uh, Top four teams do not play on the first day at the Hoover Met. If you are seated five through 12, essentially 
you play in the first round and it's single elimination. The teams that are 13th and 14th in the standings do not make it. So when you get your four winners on day one, that's eight teams remaining, the four victors and the four buys. And they go on and play double elimination the rest of the way. The Aggies are the defending champion that beat Florida in the title round in 2016. A walk to Bryce Johnson. Well, the running game is still on, and, uh, and I'm sure he's looking to do that. Case and Chirrut, an out and a walk thus far. Along with the four base on balls, AM pitching has hit two batters. Six runs, seven hits, no errors for the Bearcats. No runs, three hits, no errors by the Aggies. Going into the final SEC weekend. A&M sits in the sixth spot in conference. If everything were to hold, the Aggies would be the sixth seed. But Thursday, Friday, and Saturday will certainly have something to do with that. Throw down, runners going, stolen base. Bryce Johnson's been pretty electric tonight. Yeah, he has. Uh, he's and, and the Aggies know he's going. He got a fast uh, catcher. You catcher, you hope that you're going to get it about on right shoulder. Uh, location of your ball. If the ball is on the inside, which it was there, makes it a lot tougher to bring it all the way over to arm side and throw a guy out in a very short amount of time. Uh, so, you know, tough one for Cole to throw. Base hit, right field. Bryce Johnson's around third base. Seven nothing. Andrew Frije drives him in. Well, Sam Houston State is playing very well. They're swinging the bats well. They're seeing some pretty good pitching. Uh, and I know they're not perfect and, and all that, but they're, they're not seeing any, any weak guys. They're seeing guys that are throwing in the, in the low 90s and, uh, and working the plate. Uh, they're, just, they're just swinging the bats very well. Parise has two RBIs. Matt Deggs looks on from third base. And a swing and a miss by Clayton Harp. He also has two RBIs, a couple of singles. Harp is out of El Campo, Texas. Home of the Rice Birds. Hey, yeah, I was just going to say that. That came to my mind. So I always think about the Rice Birds. Not as good as the Hippos. But over there in Hutto, Texas. Hutto, Texas. Yeah, there's some great. Yeah, the great Aggies have a Hutto hippo, and that's Tristan Bayless on their roster. That's right. Two two count. Sent to center field, and Nick Chorby is there. 
Clayton Harp has hit the ball hard twice. Uh, one that went into right field, and then, of course, that one in center field just now. Those are well hit base baseballs. And here comes the, the cleanup of the guy that hit the home run. That Robbie got him over the hump. Uh, and he's been a, he was our player of uh, a mention before the game started, a, a real energy giver to the team. And he's shown that uh, as a, behind the plate as well as offensively. Let's hit this at Austin. Holman flip to Shoemake. That's the inning. The Bearcats get a run on an RBI single by Andrew Frije. Seven, nothing. Cats, it's time to stretch. Seven, nothing, Sam Houston State. Seventh inning stretch, and the story is Dakota Mills. Yeah. Well, Last year, six and two thirds scoreless. Tonight, six shutout innings against the Aggies. He has thrown 12 and two thirds shutout innings versus Texas A&M if you combine 2016 and 17. Just like last year, doesn't walk a whole lot of people. Hadn't walked anybody tonight. No, he's doing the same thing. He's almost got identical stats. Uh, three hits, uh, he gave up four last year at this point. But he's really commanding the pitches. He's a red shirt junior out of Meadows Place, Texas. Went to Dulles High School and Blinn Junior College. Jorge Gutierrez slashes him foul. Gutierrez 0 for 2. Coming off an Ole Miss series that saw him go 4 for 8 with two doubles and a homer. Yeah, he, this, his first uh, initial step in is a pinch hitter. He drives it out of the ballpark. Kind of a, a meaningless one uh, because he ended up losing the ball game and it was late in the game. But nonetheless, it was impressive uh, that he would step in there as a freshman and face some of uh, some of the the Southeast Conference pitching and just uh, jumped it. He's going to be he's going to be another outstanding uh, player before he leaves. Switch hitter, plays multiple positions. Good athlete. Dakota Mills has now retired 11 Aggies in a row. He's up to six strikeouts. Three of the last four batters have K'd against him. Blake Kopetsky. That's 90 mile an hour fastball. He's still bringing his his heat. Uh, he's he works 90 to 93, uh, but he he can throw it. It's another 90 trying to catch that outside corner. Blake Kopetsky swung a hot bat as of late. The last time you said that, he drove a ball in the right field for base. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Seconds <laughs> later, just to prove what you you were saying. Yeah, he's got to validate it. <laughs> He is one for two. That single in the second. It's also bounced to the shortstop. Bryan, Texas, his hometown, the neighboring city to College Station. Kopetsky said he used to celebrate birthdays in this very stadium. And Nick Chorby, who's a senior on this team, He's kind of making fun of him today. Kopetsky's had an extended college career. I mean, he went to Temple Junior College. He sat out last year because of injury. Right. Nick Chorby's a senior with three letters on this team, but he was making fun of Kopetsky the other day because Kopetsky is 24 years old. <laughs> and, and, and Chorby kind of gave it a laugh, said, hey, I hadn't even been around college that long. My <laughs> so. Lifted that to center, hit it pretty well, and going back toward the gap is Bryce Johnson for the grab. He did hit that one well. Got a pinch hitter, Hunter, Hunter Coleman, coming up. Hunter Coleman will hit for Cole Bedford.
Whether it's Ben Coleman or Bedford, the catchers have been pretty good at the plate in 2017. Yeah, they really have. Hunter Coleman's hitting 286, got 105 uh, uh, at bats. Uh, so he's been up there quite a bit. Both of them have uh, defended well. A one to nothing Bearcat advantage heading to the fifth. Dakota Mills has been cruising all night. Sam got five in the fifth. The big shot was a two run homer by Robbie Rojas. Only inning the Aggies really threatened against Mills was the third. Now Hunter Coleman has tagged him to left, and that is out of here. Pinch hit with production. Wow. A true freshman touches them all. A good stroke, uh, good uh, energy of giver to the team that has been quiet. Uh, and come out and you punch a home run. Sometimes that's what the, the team needs, and you never know. It's seven to one. Uh, probably uh, we're at 80 pitches uh, for Mills, and uh, that may be this may be his last inning. And you don't know what's coming out of the bullpen. Uh, it's it, it's always interesting. But Coach Dag is, is on his way out. That ended a string of 12 in a row retired by Dakota Mills. Hunter Coleman solo shot, seven to one. Mills is set to look in at Joel Davis. Here, like a change is in order here. Nope. It is not. Well, you would think if he's not changing him, he's, he won't be using him this weekend. He's going to go ahead and try to complete this ball game, or maybe just get this inning over with. But um, obviously, uh, he's a guy he wants to stay in this ball game and, uh, and draw a win. Pinch hitter for the Aggies. Joel Davis will not step up. It is Bain Shanevogel. Well, one pinch hitter work. Try another. Yeah, yeah. Let's give them all a chance here. <laughs> Shane Vogel from Galveston, Texas, where he went to Ball High School. 278 average. He's 5 for 18 on the year. This is the 14th game that he'll have played in. After going to Ball High School, he went to San Jacinto College. And he has gone to left. Is it back to back pinch hits, home, home runs? Yes, no doubt. Is. One work, try another, yeah. and that did too. Well, two guys come off the bench and punch in. That, those are pretty big swings. Uh, good job by guys that have been sitting watching a ball game for two hours, and then they get their chance, and, uh, and they bring it. Hunter Coleman and Bain Shane Vogel. Back to back pinch hit home runs. Double the bubbles. The bubbles are going and the crowd is still here. Austin Holman. The shortstop chopped. 
at Andrew Frije. He can't make the play. E6 in the scorebook. He's a little upset with himself, knows he should have made it. Meeting on the mound, this does not involve Matt Deggs yet. Well, umpire's not gonna let him stay out there with that too long. He's gonna come out and break that huddle up. Jet Minton hurries him along. George Yonch is due up. Bottom of the order has been kind to Texas A&M. Yancha occupies the nine hole tonight. Cannot sleep on this part of the order. Yancha has a hit, singled in the third. He's also popped out to the second baseman. Dirt. Robbie Rojas stays with it. Two two count. Well, you would think this would be it if uh, if he can't uh, if he doesn't get uh, George Yancha out. They've, they had, they've had people down the bullpen getting loose. A little surprise they haven't come and got it. There's a slider. Yancha is two for three. Top of the order, and Nick Chorby coming to the plate. Come get him now. I believe this is Jay Sirianni, the pitching coach. He'll make yeah. a change. Both of Yancha's hits mirror images of each other. We'll take a break. Dakota Mills, brilliant through six, got touched up in the seventh. Pitching change on the other side. Dakota Mills has been lifted. Another brilliant outing against Texas A&M. He did allow a couple of homers this inning. Other than that, unscathed. Six and two-thirds last year, allowing six hits against A&M. Six and two-thirds this year versus the Aggies, allowing six hits. Only difference, last year it was a shutout. But Dakota Bills, another nice outing in College Station. Riley Cooper from Texas City, the left-hander, is on. Yeah, he's going to throw 79 to 81 miles an hour. He's got a slider that he likes to throw. He's not overpowering, but he's going to try to get the slider to be his out pitch. He's uh, got a 2.90 ERA. Got 31 innings pitched, uh, giving up 21 hits, 10 base on balls, and 28 strikeouts. Nick Chorby, one for three. Outside on the first offering. Homans at second. Yancha is the runner at first.
And a 1-1 count. Aggie center fielder doesn't mind taking a strike or two. No. He hit the ball well this last Sunday and uh, see if that carries over to today. Cooper drops down and comes across and a little tougher on the left-handers. Uh, it's a it's a ball that gets into his sight. In other words, his eyes to this to the pitcher's eyes, it crosses on on the uh, on the hitter's side, and so it has to come back across a little bit of a a different look. Torby hit that well, and it's booted by Frisia, but he got the out at second base. Torby really stroked that ball well. It was a good, well hit ball, and well played. Texas A&M gets back-to-back -back pinch hit home runs from Hunter Coleman and shortly after, Bain Shanevogel. They pick up a couple of runs, they inch a little closer. It's still a seven to two Bearcat lead and we roll to the eighth. Going to the eighth. Aggie's got a couple of homers in the seventh, and they will send a left-hander on that if you could find a hotter pitcher in the country, I'd challenge you to do it because Kaylor Chafin hadn't allowed a single run in his last 25 and a third innings. Yeah, he's uh, he's the hero of the pitching staff at this point, and he's really done well. He's got a 1.79 ERA, seven wins and one loss, 22 appearances. So he's coming in different roles, uh, but he's got 55 innings uh, pitched and uh, been a difference maker. 56 strikeouts in that, 12 base on balls. He doesn't get in trouble. Uh, he throws strikes and teams are only hitting 194 off of him, but he's gonna come in from the left side and hit both sides of the plate. Got a pretty good uh, pretty good breaking pitch as well as a changeup. Cole Stanley's in the game in left field. That means Blake Kopes. Kopetsky, who wasn't left, has shifted to right. A flip to Kaylor Chafin from Jorge Gutierrez, who's now at first base for the first out of the inning. That was off the bat of Blake Chisholm. And Hunter Coleman is now catching for the Aggies. Good execution. Yeah, the ball finds the new guy. <laughs> you know, it always does. You put somebody out there, and it's going to hunt him down. But uh, oh. Gutierrez is... Uh, uh, he's a good athlete. We've seen him in different positions, probably three different. He can catch, he can play second base, play first base, third base, and, uh, and I'm sure he can play the outfield. Kaylor Chafin is the Aggies' fifth pitcher of the night. A&M got four and two thirds from the starter, Turner Larkins. He allowed four runs. John Doxakis in a third of an inning allowed a run. Landon Miner threw a scoreless frame. And Case and Sherrod gave up a run in one inning. Hunter Hearn is the hitter. He's 0 for 3. He struck out twice. You have a closer. Um one of the things that you can't wait too long to use them. You can't save them for a week. Uh, whether they're needed or not, a 7-2 ball game, you say, well, or 8-2 or whatever, 7-2. Uh, you say, why is he in there? He, he's in there to get his work in. He needs to stay tuned up for this weekend as well uh, and probably won't throw a tremendous amount of pitches, but he'll he'll come in and work and, and get, some, uh, get some pitches in. Slicing toward the gap, but Nick Chorby's got speed and the ability to run it down. Well, Hunter Hearn hit that ball well. That was a nice stroke. He has two Ks tonight, and, but he came up there and just drove that ball. So Kaylor Chafin has now thrown 26 consecutive scoreless innings. 
Jackson Grisham is due up. Might get a pinch hitter. And we will. Josh Biles will come to the plate. Well, Josh Biles is a sophomore from Sugarland, Texas, in Dulles High School. He's 6'3, 225 pounds. He's hitting 233, uh, 30 at bats. Be the 24th game that Josh Biles has appeared in. So he hits for Jackson Grisham. It's the DH spot. And in the eight hole. Since the start of April, Coach, it has just been sit back and enjoy when Caleb Chafin comes to the mound. Yeah, you, you know, and he, he stands amongst a lot of guys that are power pitchers who can really bring it. And it's not that he can't throw hard, but he, he can't throw as hard as those guys. And he throws well enough that he can make the breaking pitch, but particularly the changeup work. Uh, and so he's going to work in, in the mid-80s and, uh, and get after it. But uh, he has been been really awesome to watch. He's gone 3-1 to Josh Biles. Oh. Works full. Last two pitches, 88-87. But they were located. Uh, outside corner just uh, missed the corner, and, and then uh, that board. one was down and away uh, inside the plate. But certainly not pitches that other people can hit. Came in with an 88. Biles fought him off on a full count pitch. Nice hand for one of our patrons. And a good catch in the stands. Struck him out swinging. And an easy inning for Kaler Chafin. That's been the norm for a month and a half. <laughs> it is seven to two Bearcats. As Biles K's. Sam Houston, six outs away. Sam Houston State has come to College Station. Opened up a seven two lead on the Aggies. They need six more outs. We're going to the bottom of the eighth. Cole Stanley is the hitter. Subbed to left field in the last frame. Cole Stanley hadn't played much. He's got 11 uh, at bats. He's hitting 182. He just hasn't had a lot of a lot of opportunities to get get into a groove. Riley Cooper misses well to the outside. Came in for Dakota Mills in the last inning. Dakota Mills six and two thirds strong. Second year in a row that Mills shuts down the Aggie bats. 2016, late in the year, Sam Houston State beat the Aggies five to nothing in a shutout. Lead by five runs tonight. Well, Stanley was down in the count. Now he's worked it full. If you're A&M, you're thinking base runners. You don't really care how you get them. Yeah. But Stanley strikes out. Good, good location on that pitch. Got a fastball in on him. Well, Will, that uh, two-hole doesn't look too impressive tonight. Wow. Yeah. Got four Ks sitting on it. 
three by Logan Foster and now Cole Stanley. I didn't notice that till you said it. Looked down at the scorecard. And that's when I gave it the wow. <laughs> they have been shut down. It's an important spot because they're the guys that need to get on base for yes. a guy like Braden Shoemake. Set the table. Shoemake bounces to Blake Chisholm. Real quick as Shoemake is an out and he heads back to the A&M dugout yesterday. He was invited to this summer's USA Baseball Collegiate National Team's training camp where he will compete for a roster spot. Aggies in the past who have played on the Collegiate National Team, they include Nick Banks, Tyler Naquin, and Michael Waka. Coach, you had some guys in your day that played for you we on, sure on Team did. USA. Yeah, we, we did. Uh, Gutierrez, got <laughs> past Frigia. Yeah, uh, Scott Livingstone, Chad Allen played in the Olympics. Uh, he was our Olympian from, from my group uh, that was really good. But we had a number of guys have an opportunity to play for USA Baseball and, and uh, play against the Japanese and, and travel overseas. Just had great experiences and play with some outstanding players. Uh, Jeff Granger would be in that. There's a, quite a few of them that come to mind, but uh, they all represented uh, the university well. And uh, uh, it was it was really special. I can remember going to Japan and playing over there. And uh, Texas A&M has a university in, in Tokyo. And uh, a group of students came out to watch Jeff Granger pitch. <laughs> it's kind of special. <laughs> Kopetsky still swinging it well, but that's into the glove of Hunter Hearn. That was a well hit ball. I like that swing. 7 2 Bearcats. And we're going to the ninth. Seven to two. Sam Houston State, top nine. Texas AM calls on Mitchell Kilkenny. Well, Mitchell's uh, coming in. He's got 3.18 ERA. He's 3-2, 45 innings pitched. Uh, he's got 44 strikeouts, 16 base on balls. Teams are hitting 285 off him. He's another guy that can throw hard. He's going to throw 94 miles an hour. He's right-hand pitcher, 6'3", uh, 210. Uh, he comes out of Houston Christian. But he's going to come in with a pretty good cutter. Uh, his fastball, curveball cutter uh, pitch, uh, and he's, he's been out there quite a bit. He's got some good stuff and can really have good innings. Taylor Bean to start the ninth. A&M in their ninth. Would have six, seven, and eight do up. Right now, that's Coleman, Shane Vogel, and Homan. But sure. Coleman and Shane Vogel were the guys that hit yeah. two homers in the <laughs> seven. Pretty hard to make a change there. Yeah. <laughs> They've only come for one at bat. <laughs> uh, but I mean, you, if you want to get some guys some work, I'm not picking on anybody, but uh, they certainly did well in their one at bat. Hit that well down the line. Try to keep that a double, but uh, that they're holding to a single, but he got it right down the line. That's impossible. That's a well hit ball. Sam Houston State, nine hits tonight, two of them by Taylor Bean. Top of the order in Riley McKnight. That's two times up. He's hit it to third base. Last time was a shot, and Yancha made a nice play on it. Knight lays.
lays down a bunt. It's going to be a tough play. Nice Got play. It. Nice athletic play. That was a good bunt. It's part of the book on Sam Houston. They lay down sacrifice bunts in abundance. Taylor Bean moves to third. Well, they're going to move the, the uh, infield in. They can't give him any more runs, and so they're going to come in and uh, cut him off at home plate. Uh, Coach Deggs is probably saying, hey, we're going to see the ball through unless you get a high hopper. Uh, sometimes you gamble and you say, what are the chances are going to be hit right at him? And if you get a jump on going down, if you see the ball going down off the bat, uh, get a good jump, you might make it. That got away. And the Bearcats will score on the wild pitch. Bean comes home 8-2. to two. Well, uh, Coleman went down to block that one, and it uh, took a little bit of different hop and came off uh, his glove and went away from him. It was a good effort uh, on the block. It was a definitely a wild pitch. Good change up right there. Nice pitch. Been impressed with this hitter right here. Uh, uh, just because he brings some speed to the lineups and uh, we don't see a lot of speed guys uh, they, that do a lot of stealing. And He's got 22 of them. He's comfortable with the plate. He's comfortable out uh, on the base pass. Looks like he's got good quickness. Uh, uh, got a hard base hit to right field first time up. He got hit by pitch and then he got a base hit into uh, to uh, center field. And now uh, his second base on balls. Five times Bryce Johnson has come up and he's run all five times. Here's a hit by Frisia. Two aboard. The Cats keep coming, and the Aggies are well behind, 8-2. to two. Clayton Harp, the hitter. Well, what's pretty impressive, they're seeing, they don't get, they're not getting a second look at any of these pitchers, uh, and they're, sw they're making good contact, contact, a lot of solid, well-hit balls. Uh, they've got 10 hits right now, but they've made some hard outs as well. Uh, so the Bearcats are swinging it, they're swinging it good. In the air, Harp to Chorby. <laughs> Sam Houston State looking for a sixth straight midweek win. They all would come against good competition. They then would look forward to their final Southland Conference Series this weekend against Incarnate Word. Told you a few times, the Bearcats will likely have to win the Southland Conference Tournament in Sugarland if they hope to advance to the NCAAs. This is a program that's been to the NCAA Tournament seven times in the last 10 years. A great showing tonight in College Station. But they and Matt Deggs are trying to set themselves up for what happens in Sugarland. That's the run that matters to them now. Yeah, this is going to be, a, a, at this point, it's going to be a, a great 
momentum gatherer for them uh, on the pitching staff as well as defensively. They played well, uh, but I think that the bats, uh, they could really get, gain some steam here and feel good about themselves because they met the challenge of the fastball, and uh, sometimes that's hard to do, but you got guys that are power pitching in, and you stood up and, and, and turned it around, and so give them a lot of credit. Took an odd hop, but Austin Holman plays it off the bat of Robbie Rojas. And Rojas comes up limping. Yeah, he took a jump at that first base and uh, looked like he may have, hopefully he didn't twist his ankle or anything. You hate to see any time, particularly when you've got one of your leaders and it's late in the season when you're trying to make a run at something. You hope nobody got hurt. We'll see if he catches on the other side of the break. Sawing horns, trying to conjure some magic. They'll need plenty of it. Sam Houston State and he leads eight to two, and we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Robbie Rojas was injured running up the line in that last inning. And I believe he has come back out to catch in the ninth. He looked down at that ankle when he made that throw to second base a moment ago, but it does appear Robbie Rojas will return to catch. Yeah, you, uh, you see it looked like a pretty good twist. He limped on it quite a bit, and you think hey, maybe we ought to get some ice on it right away. This ball game's a little bit um, uneven and um, might take a chance, but he's, he's back out there. Hunter Coleman leads off in a pinch hit roll in the seventh. A solo homer over the left field wall. Texas A&M will host Arkansas this weekend. The Aggies sitting in good shape to make an 11th straight NCAA tournament. The only thing you don't want to do is slide down the stretch, and if A&M does not come up with a monster comeback tonight, they will have lost five of their last six and it put pre it's it puts some pressure on the Arkansas series uh, certainly doesn't mean they aren't going to get into it but uh, they would certainly like to get a little bit more comfort in uh, as you add the the W's and the L's and particularly of late uh, how hot you are uh, coming into a tournament that's strike three, but he's got a chance to get to first base. Will not do it. Rojas got back there. That ankle must be okay, but he he's got limping. back there and threw it out. <laughs> he's limping now, but he <laughs> wasn't limping when he was chasing that ball. <laughs> he chased that ball and threw a strike at first base. Just couldn't handle that pitch, but it's a strikeout swinging. And... That's a curveball that went down and in. Uh, what we call a back foot curveball. Tommy Gilman will hit. Chopped foul. And you mentioned it could be some pressure on the Arkansas series. What A&M doesn't want to do is put anything in the committee's hands. Now they could still very well make the NCAA tournament if they put it in the committee's hands. They'd still look like a fine selection. The Aggies, they're just trying to lock this thing up there and, yeah. and end it, end all discussions, and they are so close to doing that. Yeah. Gilman trying to loop one in, but getting back there and making the catch, Riley McKnight. Bearcats and out away. Austin Holman is the Aggies' last chance. McKnight. Not easy to get back there with the right fielder coming.
Homan, Taylor Bean. Bearcats win on this Tuesday night, their sixth midweek win in a row, all against good competition. And, Coach, I guess the story is once again Dakota Mills, that man. Yeah, I don't think any question about it. He, st- he set the st- the, uh, the motion uh, that uh, they came to play, and, uh, you know, he uh, he just uh, dominated. I, I thought uh, held the Aggies uh, to six hits, uh, didn't walk guys. Uh, the Aggies didn't get a lot of well hits off of him. Uh, he really uh, he really dominated the ball game. Well, our producer tonight was Chris Bischke. Our director was Tyler Honeycutt. Assistant director was Joe Bill Munoz, and associate producer was Ryan Stanker. Thanks to all of them for their work this season and tonight. For Mark Johnson, I'm Will Johnson. Sam Houston State has defeated the Aggies this evening by a final count of 8-2. to two. A&M falls back to 35-18 and 18 on the year. Sam Houston State moves forward to 33 and 20. If you want to see an entire replay of this game, as well as others on our family of ESPN networks, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. Thank you for joining us from College Station. Bearcats win, and this has been a presentation of the SEC ESPN. To Olsen Field at Bluebell Park in College Station, where tonight the Sam Houston State Bearcats have made the short trek west on Highway 30 to face off with the Texas A&M Aggies. Let us bring you into the broadcast booth where I'm Will Johnson with the man in Mark Johnson, who was the head coach of both of these programs in his past 21 years at A&M, five at the helm of the Bearcats. Good to have you with us on the broadcast, and we're going to spotlight a couple of guys right now. For Sam Houston State, the catcher is really good. That's Robbie Rojas. Yeah, he's a big time energy giver, and he said, "Well, he hits the ball very well. He's got a 326 batting average. He's got 31 RBIs. He's a he's a ringleader. He's out of Jersey Village, a senior, went to Blinn Junior College, and has come in here and and really been a a, a big time Bearcat." Now, on the Aggies' side of things, we've been talking about Braden Shoemake all year. No reason to stop now, Coach. No, he hasn't let up. This wasn't just a streak. I mean, he is a flat, good hitter, good player. He's got three, a batting average of 351. he He's got 16 doubles, uh, two triples, nine home runs, slugging percentage at 563. Here's the incredible thing. He's got 61 RBIs. The closest to him is 30. Yeah. I mean, he just, if they get on the bases, he's going to get them off. Uh, and he just absolutely moves runners and has had a tremendous year for a freshman to get into this conference and do what he's doing is, is outstanding. Well, both of these teams have had midweek success in 2017. We'll talk about that a little later. For the Aggies to continue it, they'll ask Turner Larkins to take to the mound. He's a big power pitcher. He's done well. He's been a Tuesday guy for uh, – a and M. He's a junior right-hand pitcher. He's got a 1-1 record, but he's got a 2.45 ERA. But he's going to get it up there, 94-95. He's got good stuff. He's out of Arlington Martin. He's 6-3, 210. He will look in at Riley McKnight to start the Bearcat second baseman. Top one underway. McKnight entering this contest, a 248 average. Freesia is one to watch, the shortstop in the three hole. And we discussed Robbie Rojas, the catcher, moments ago. Well, Riley McKnight's got, uh, he's got nine stolen bases. Uh, he, he, while he's not hitting great, he plays a good uh, second base, and he's uh, he's been a good leadoff hitter. Takes a lot of pitches uh, and gets some base on balls, but he, he, he'll he get six or seven pitches out of each pitcher when he gets up the at bat. Turner Larkins out of Arlington Martin High School. All four of his starts this year have been on Tuesdays. I think the thing that uh, that he needs to get over the hump as far as extending games out there. He uh, last year he averaged four uh, four innings an outing. He had 17 starts, uh, and he's uh, doing the same thing here. He. he uh, he has good stuff. He just hasn't got length into a ball game and got himself to where he can relax and pitch. And here we go uh, with a, a base on ball, something you hate to start a ball game with. Now, he he didn't try to do that. But nonetheless, uh, in the first inning, you just want to you dream of that first pitch and, and just getting after somebody. But 
uh, he's got himself into a little bit of a, a bind right now. He's been up and down with the walks in recent outings. Starts off with a base on balls issued to Ryla McKnight. Now a mainstay in center field, Bryce Johnson. He's got three thirties. He's got 21 stolen bases. Uh, he is really he's he's the runner on the ball club, and he uh, he can move the runners and uh, you know he might might bunt the runner over, may hit and run, controls the bat very well. Something to look at. Sam Houston State fifth in the nation in sacrifice bunts laid down. They do it often, may try it early. Runners going, base hit. They'll be at the corners with nobody out, an early Bearcat threat. Well, there it is. And Bryce Johnson comes up with, you know, get the, get the hit and run. I think that was a hit and run. Uh, he finds a hole out there, and uh, yeah, the Bearcats turn that into a first and third situation with no outs and their uh, three-hole hitter up. Poised to take the lead, McKnight at third, Johnson at first. Larkin's in trouble without an out. Andrew Frije to the plate, the shortstop. Frije at 319 on the year. He's left the yard six times. He's driven in 35. Runner at first is going. Throw down to second, not in time. Two in scoring position. Well, that was just a straight single steal right there. They weren't trying to get two guys in movement. Uh, throw the ball down there and see if you can get him. He went right on the first pitch. Uh, Matt Daggs is coming right at him. It's the coach at, at Bearcats. Uh, he wants to show aggressiveness. He wants to show his team, hey, we can take it to these guys. We're going to go out there. We're going to take them our stuff. Uh, and I think coaches, when they do that, that, that that's an acceleration for the energy in a, in a ball club. Frije a chance to drive two in after Bryce Johnson stole his 22nd base of the season. Good slider right there, 84 mile an hour slider, right where he would want to get it, get him, entice him to go for it and then let, uh, let him run out of bat on it. Larkins has been pretty good in the four Tuesday starts. 2.04 ERA in those outings. Has bounced at George Johnson. He's got the runner hung up. Tag on McKnight as he dove for home plate. And another run down in between first and second. They'll have to watch closely the runner at third. Coming home, the Aggies play defense to get a big time double play. Well, that was similar to what happened uh, this past weekend at Old Miss where a situation developed and they let the runner score from third base instead of going for him. Joel Davis had a hot eye for the runner at third base as, the, as they created the rundown. A good throw by the uh, uh, catcher down to first base. He sees that there's an open uh, spot there to get a backdoor play. A nice play, a pressure play uh, by the Aggie defense. Still a runner in scoring position as Frije went to second through all that. But now two down. Heads up defensively by the Aggies. Clayton Harp the hitter. A&M was caught by Ole Miss over the weekend with a runner going home. Yeah. A&M got an out, but it was the third out of the inning. Runner scored before they got the tag. Perhaps caught napping a bit in Oxford. Very wary of what the Bearcats were up to at home in the first inning tonight. Yeah, when you saw that develop, that's exactly what oh. I thought because I know uh, A&M went over that play uh, after the ball game and probably uh, before this ball game, a reminder of what they're going to do in a first and third situation, get runners run down. We've got to keep an eye, eye on the guy at third base. The third baseman has got to be a a very vocal person by saying there he goes and, uh, and, and or going or whatever terminology they choose to use. 
Um, and Joel, Joel Davis would have had high, heightened awareness on that play. He, he wouldn't let that uh, get out of his eyesight. Ground ball pass. Davis, the Bearcats look to take the lead, and they will on Clayton Harp. RBI single to right. So the Bearcats do get a run. Harp drives home, frees it. As well hit ball. Just think if they had if they <laughs> had not have got that out uh, the previous out uh, with two men on base, uh, what what the score would look like at this point. Sort of a mixed bag in the first inning. The Bearcats glad to get one, but they know it could have possibly been more. Robbie Rojas, he can keep any inning alive. He steps to the plate, first pitch, a strike. Well, he's a young man. We talked about about players to watch, and this is one of this is the energy giver. He's he, he's going to create. He's going to throw punches, uh, and he's going to try to make something happen. There's the slider. Didn't get him to bite for that. Bearcats. Good record when they strike first. Runners going very aggressive in this first inning. Caught is Clayton Hart by Cole Bedford. Well, they, they've shown aggressiveness. They've gotten after it, but they've also cost themselves some runs. And that's part of the problem. When you, when you get too aggressive, uh, sometimes it, it backfires on you. I thought, uh, I thought they had a good plan. They came out right away. It made some things happen, but it also created some outs. Cats, one to nothing. The Aggies flashed some leather at the top of one. The Bearcats a run, but the Aggie defense was spectacular. Could have been more for Sam Houston State in the top of one, and now A&M comes to bat. Dakota Mills is the right-handed starter. Well, of course, he was the starter last year and got a win. Uh, went six and two-thirds innings, gave up like four hits, uh, had a tremendous outing, and he's got good stuff. He's going to throw 86 to 91. Slider changeup guy, he's a strike thrower. The critical thing for him to stay out there is he has a hard time sometimes establishing a secondary pitch. You know, he'll get his fastball in there. He can work both sides of the play with the fastball, but to get the slider and the changeup going, He's had a hard time at times getting that to work, but when he gets it going, he's a guy that can stay out there for a while. Nick Chorby leads it off. Senior with three letters, a true veteran. This is a guy that he's trying to hit 300 and he's just been fluctuating above and below that 300 line it seems like almost every day for about a month now that's exaggeration but <laughs> it just feels like that no, no question about it you know what he hit last year don't you 299 there you oh. go <laughs> that's what that's who he is i'm a 299 not yeah. 300 yeah. no uh you know he's he's had some moments where he's gone as he did uh, sunday two days ago at old miss uh, i think he went three for four uh, he's, he's a steady player. Uh, he takes a lot of pitches. He hurts himself a little bit offensively in that he'll get himself into a bad count just because he's going to take pitches as a leadoff hitter. And uh, consequently, he gets himself into to tough spots. But a uh, good leadoff hitter has, has been a, a guy that can put pressure on the defense. Blake Chisholm, the first baseman. Runs down the bag himself, three unassisted on the ground out to start Chorby and the Aggies night offensively. You know, it was interesting to watch the Bearcats come out, and of course they, they put the ball in play and they got a walk. They did some things that allowed base runners to get on base, and, and then they started throwing punches. I, I mean, they absolutely put some pressure and see if they could put the, uh, the, the Aggies in a bad spot, and the Aggies responded. Uh, it was a pretty interesting first inning. Logan Foster to the plate. Going back to that double play, A&M turned in the top of one. 
the scoring if you're wondering. <laughs> it would go five to three to six to three to two. All that to turn a double play, and it was a big one. And everybody who possessed the ball had to be heads up the entire game. Yeah, they had to be in the game, and they had to keep an eye on that runner at third base. And the thing that made it interesting for us is that the play came up. It, it fell into place like uh, like that with the men on first and third. Run down, run down turns into a run down between first and third, or first and second, and the runner scores before they uh, tag the runner out. And I'm sure, and this is one of the things about the the, the season, you got to keep getting better. You got to keep. You got to be one game better after each game, and by the end of the season, you've got to be 56 games better than you were if you're working to be the team you want to be. And so the Aggies learned something on Sunday. They came back and were forced into seeing if they could execute it and pull it off. So I, it was fun to watch and uh, and give the Bearcats credit because they they were absolutely uh, putting pressure on. And, making some things happen. This game is still a long ways from over. We may see some more of this. <laughs> Call strike three, Dakota Mills, first two men down. Well, Logan's hitting 300. Uh, he has uh, some strikeouts, <laughs> and, and but you know, these freshmen that are hitting 300, they've got quite a few of them. Um, they are really good hitters, and they're going to learn that that plate can stretch. The outside part of that black adds, adds a couple more inches on both sides. And uh, you don't see that in high school much, but when you see a pitcher out there in college that can work to that spot and the official behind the plate, the umpire, he knows he's doing it on purpose. Uh, he, they'll, those things become strikes, and uh, so you get a lot of called third strikes in your initial year uh, in. Braden Shoemake coming off a good weekend in Oxford. He was 5 for 12 in the Ole Miss series. AM dropped 2 of 3 to the Rebels. Sam Houston State took a harder hit. They were swept by Houston Baptist over the weekend. Trying to go back up the middle. The glove comes off, but Dakota Mills able to make the throw. A smooth first inning somewhat. He can laugh about the glove popping off the left hand after he goes three up, three down to the bottom of one. Bearcats showed some aggression in the top of one. They do get a run. Matt Deggs not sitting back and watching things unfold. He had the Bearcats going. He's the head coach at Sam Houston State, and he spent some time at Texas A&M 2006 to 2011. He was an assistant here under Rob Childress, first pitch swinging, Robbie Rojas, and that is to Logan Foster in right. So Matt Deggs, he comes back to College Station, and he had the wheel turning in the first inning. Blake Chisholm is the hitter. He is first pitch swinging. That's fouled away. Well, Matt Deggs has been in several places, and he's, he's coached very well and had a lot of success and uh, certainly has done well at Sam Houston State. Came inside and hit him. Turner Larkins has issued a walk and now plunked the batter in his first inning in the third. Larkins was a factor down the stretch a season ago for Texas A&M. They're hoping for the same in 2017. There have been times the control has gotten away from him and Base on balls and a hit batsman already. Well, in his defense, slightly. Uh, he uh, he had problems last year with the same uh, setting. He, he created problems for himself. Got great stuff. He had a bone spur removed in the fall and didn't practice in the fall. Uh, he was certainly out on the field and whatnot, but wasn't able to throw. And so he got off to a slow start and hasn't really got a turn. Now, in last year, 
uh, in the same way he came on when they started attacking in the latter part of the season in the stretch run he was a key guy and he's a key guy in the playoffs and that's what they're hoping right now that uh, this thing will catch fire because he does have that kind of stuff uh, and you know right now he hasn't shown it but it, uh, you know he could turn around from this pitch from this pitch on and uh, and start getting himself ready for uh, for a depth into a, uh, a tournament play got a strikeout his first of the night hunter hearn the victim swinging two down think of larkins his last three starts in 2016. they were in the sec tournament championship game against florida in the regional title game against Minnesota, and then in one of the super regional contests against TCU. Proving to you how valuable he can yeah, be. Without question. He did pretty well in all of them. Yes, he did, and I think that's one of the things the Aggies have going for them. Should they get into the tournament and get depth into a tournament, uh, they have some really nice arms sitting on the bench. In tournament play, postseasonal tournament play, there are always pitchers that step up and throw out, and they give you seven or eight innings, and they never did it the whole season. And they and I've had it done to, to us and for us uh, in playoffs, and uh, it's not unusual. But he would be a guy that could do that. I mean, he teases you with his stuff, uh, good stuff. Jackson Grisham is, is a young man from College Station, uh, has uh, done well at, at Sam. The DH tonight, hitting in the eighth spot. A 2-1 count as that last offering missed just outside. Bearcats got two hits and a run in the top of the first. Could have been more. Some quality Aggie defense. Some headsy plays. Kept it at just that solo run. 2-2 two, two now to Jackson Grisham. Following him will be Taylor Bean. Then you go back to the top of the Bearcat order. You hear the horn in the distance. The 7 o'clock's a bit early. Yeah, that's a southbound. Uh, it may be empty. Uh, I think the 7 o'clock one is, uh, is empty. Back up the middle, base hit. Two aboard as Grisham gets a knock. That was a nice hit, nice swing. That drove that one right up the middle. And, uh, uh, you know, that, it's a dangerous spot out there when you're pitching. You're 60 feet, 6 inches. And when you get when you release the ball, you're, you're down to about 58. And that ball came off the bat hard and almost, uh, uh, almost caught him uh, defenseless. When the bats were hot, hotter than they are now, the aluminum bats and the bat manufacturers started producing a better bat each year. Pretty soon they became so dangerous that the corner people in the infield as well as the pitcher, uh, it was too dangerous to play with them. And so they uh, they have reduced the, the uh, rebound of the ball off the bat, the exit speed, and, and that gets it back down close to what a wood bat is. Throwback. Cole Bedford trying to get Jackson Grisham. An opportunity for the Bearcats, but Turner Larkins just needs an out to retire Sam with no runs crossing in the top of two. Taylor Bean hits in the nine hole, but he carries a 3.09 average into the game. foul right through the on-deck circle. Well, he has two home runs. He's got five stolen bases. Uh, he's a, I, it's not unusual, but it, it's a, it's not as, as, you don't see it as much. You put a good guy in the nine hole because if, if he gets on, he's got a lot of hitters to move him around. And he's got some speed. Uh, but if you can, you, it, it, it's come time you can't afford to do that. <coughs> you just don't have enough hitters. Just missed the outside corner. A groan. Yeah, that was close. Comes over the Bluebell Park crowd. I would imagine that umpire is now telling 
telling the catcher, uh, don't hold it too long. Because he held, he throws that one. And umpires don't like that because that draws the attention. Got him on the next pitch, swinging. Two Ks in that inning for Turner Larkins. Sam gets a couple of base runners, but nothing across. It is a Bearcat lead. one nothing. Sam Houston State. The Aggies coming to bat in the bottom of the second. A&M head coach Rob Childress in his 12th year at the helm of the program. A week from Monday is selection day for the NCAA tournament field. The Aggies are trying to get in for the 11th consecutive year. Jorge Gutierrez leads off. He was four for eight in the Ole Miss series with two doubles and a homer. Cleanup spot on this Tuesday versus the Bearcats. Swing and a miss. Two strikeouts now for Dakota Mills. Yeah, that's a 93 mile an hour fastball. His fastball, he's doing a good job with his fastball. The other pitch, the slider is starting to come in and uh, he likes to throw that with the right hander. Uh, the left handers have a high batting average, a much higher batting average against him because his change up, he, he doesn't get his change up established to where it's sinking and, and, and uh, going away from the left hand hitter. But uh, right handers have a hard time. He's got good stuff. Blake Kopetsky's been swinging a hot bat and continues to do so. First hit of the game for the AM Aggies. That's a nice stroke right there. Just jumped on the first pitch and drove it. It's a stroke. It's a nice stroke. Got his hands through, got his body turned well. Good pivot on the back side through the ball. Cole Bedford's hitting 313, and usually your six-hole hitter doesn't have that kind of batting average, but he is uh, he has been a guy that really has improved from last year and has hit a well over 300 uh, the whole season. Yeah, Cole Bedford, eight starts in 2016 and a 143 average. Go to 2017, his sophomore season, 32 starts and 313. Yeah. There's really been, you talk a lot about the freshman class for A&M, which is led by Shoemate. That is high in the air, and that looks like it might stay in play for Rojas. Going to be a tough catch, but he grabs it. Foul out popped up by Cole Bedford. But you talk freshmen with this A&M team, there's some seniors as well. Sophomores have been pretty good. Cole Bedford, George Johnson on the mound, Stephen Kolick, Mitchell yeah. Kilkenny. I think you're right. I think you talk about young ball club, and those guys are young because they didn't throw a whole bunch as freshmen. Uh, and so they're still, you still think of them as young kind of rookie guys, uh, but they've been here this their second year, and, and they're doing well. And that's why the, the future is so promising when you look at the freshmen and the sophomores that are getting a lot of valuable playing time right now. Uh, it certainly bodes well for uh, 2018, but no one's interested in that right now. <laughs> you won't find anyone there in the Aggie dugout interested in that. They're interested in this ball game right now and then this weekend, and they're going to see if, they, if they're going to make another tournament, uh, which I would think you, they would. They certainly would. We'll, we can talk about it a little bit later, but they. They've got the RPIs, the, the APRs, and, and all kinds of stuff that's uh, that's looked at uh, uh, by the committee. Yeah, both of these teams hoping to make sure they are in the NCAA tournament. As Coach mentioned, we'll discuss that more later. I will tell you, Sam Houston State took a big hit in the at-large department this past weekend getting swept by Houston Baptist. We'll run down the RPIs and such later. 
Yeah, I, it, it, it was a tough break for Sam Houston uh, because the first of the, of the conference season, they, they were 13 and 0, I believe, and then they've lost. Uh, they're, now they're 11 and 14, so they really made a drastic change uh, and just lost some momentum. A bouncer to Blake Chisholm. Dakota Mills is through two scoreless. Bearcats a one run advantage. Midweek baseball on a Tuesday night in College Station. As you might figure, these two have gotten together quite some time. The Bearcats, all they had to do was hop on a bus and go about 50 minutes to the west on Highway 30, and they were in College Station, 131st meeting between the two schools. Well, it's a very convenient one where you don't have to miss any classes. In, uh, and so it makes it uh, very easy to, to schedule games. And Sam Houston's always had uh, baseball, always been an important part of that uh, that university and that athletic department, as, of course, it has at Texas A&M. So it's a natural uh, uh, game to play. And uh, I know when I was at A&M, well, we, we played three times because it was easy Tuesday ball games. Don't miss class, play, and get back home. And you don't get back home late. Got to make sure you stop, though, at the four-way in Roan's Prairie. That's right. Either way, whether you're going east or west. <laughs> I believe if you look at the map, the only Division I school that is closer to Texas A&M than Sam is Prairie View A&M. Yeah. And yeah. I think it's by a matter of maybe three miles. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Both of them are easy teams to play as far as uh, – Travel and uh, missing class, all those things, uh, it really works out well. He came on the air and mentioned it. My partner, Mark Johnson, 21 years as the head coach at Texas A&M, five at the helm of the Bearcat program. This game's always got to mean a little bit to you when they get oh, together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I got a chance to visit with Bobby Williams, the athletic director, over 30 years. At Sam Houston, the athletic director, the man that hired me at uh, Sam Houston, he's here for the ball game, and along with him are Don Sanders and his son. Don Sanders is a alum and has uh, contributed immensely to uh, the university, and the field is named after him. Some people call it the Don, uh, but Don Sanders Stadium, uh, and he is a part owner, was a part owner of the Astros, and uh, just a, he's a baseball buff, but. Uh, a very benevolent person has been very good to his university. Riley McKnight just flew out to center. And Bryce Johnson will come to the plate. Popped up the bunt over toward the Aggie dugout. One thing I'll say about Sam Houston State, if you haven't ventured over to Huntsville often, I mean an absolutely gorgeous campus amidst the pines over there. Yeah, it really is. You're right. And what they've also done is they've made a beautiful ballpark. They've completely turfed the whole thing. Uh, I mean, they've got everything that you want in a ballpark. It's it's kind of sunken in, uh, and it's uh, in the pines of a beautiful campus. If you haven't been over there, you, you ought to go. It's, uh, it's a beautiful place. They play out of the Southland Conference, which has certainly become one of the top mid-major leagues. You think about this program, Sam Houston State, this year, you look at what McNeese has done, southeastern yeah. Louisiana. Competitive baseball over there. Another hit batsman by Turner Larkins. Bryce Johnson will run with an out. Well, John Skeeters was a longtime coach there that really established it and brought it out of the NAI where they've won they won national championships a couple of them and uh, turned it into a division one program uh, and didn't skip very much of a beat to get that done and got themselves in the southland conference great history uh, but under an outstanding coach uh, that had passion for baseball passion for his field uh, i really enjoyed uh, uh, the competition we had and it, but more than that i've enjoyed the fellowship and the friendship of, uh, of john skeeters 
After the hit batsman, it's Andrew Frije. Sam Houston State, they've made the NCAA tournament seven of the last ten years. Yeah. Some of those were your ball clubs. Yeah, we were fortunate to make it. In the uh, first year, we made it. Uh, we went to, to Ole Miss and got into the final ball game. We just had a thrill. It was just, uh, you know, packed house, Southeast Conference team. Just, uh, uh, just a neat deal for the young people that I had uh, the, the joy of coaching. Uh, they just really played well and played right into uh, the regional uh, tournament. Runner is going. Bearcats stay aggressive. This is a fly to right. Logan Foster makes the catch. He'll try to throw back to first base. Maybe a play, not quite. Back standing up is Bryce Johnson. Yeah, uh, Bryce Johnson, of course, is a base stealer. Could have been going on his own, but it appeared a little bit like a hit and run, but it wasn't a hit and run swing. So I'm just thinking the green light was on to run. The green light was on to swing, and uh, and that's what it created, a uh, long fly ball. And, uh, and Foster got behind it. Foster's got a pretty good arm, uh, so almost turned into a play. Logan Foster, the freshman from Lincoln, Nebraska. He's in right. Rest of the Aggie outfield, Nick Chorby in center and Blake Kopetsky in left. Clayton Harp drove in the only run of the game in the first inning. He bats now. And a check. Of Bryce Johnson. Well, you certainly have to. You would bet that Bryce Johnson is going to steal. He stole the first time he got on, and he's got 22, 22 stolen bases now. So he he likes to go and got a left-hand hitter up there. Might get a good jump. A little bit harder for the catcher to throw. And they're watching him close. Twenty-two out of twenty-nine this year. Bryce Johnson on his theft attempts. Another check. Well, these checks are with diff different rhythm, different holding pattern. So he's trying to keep him from getting a, a jump because you have a pattern out there on the mound. So you may hold the ball for three seconds, and then the next time you hardly ever, you just change directions and then come to home. Uh, so you do all you can to keep him close. Pitch out. Texas A&M's middle infielders, Austin Holman at shortstop and Braden Shoemake at second base. They've shifted toward the pull a little bit. Holman's near the bag, and Shoemake has shaded himself over toward the line at first base. Well, Clayton Harp uh, pulled the ball to right field last time up, and they may have their book may say that's what he does. He likes to pull the ball. Joel Davis dropped the baseball for just a moment. Close play at first base. <laughs> Up the middle, and Chorby is there. Bearcats get a base runner, they strand him at first. One nothing. Cats from the end. Bearcats got their run in the first. Ex, uh, the Aggies of Texas A&M, they have a hit, but they've been sat down for the most part in the first two innings by Dakota Mills. Last season, late in the year, midweek contest here in College Station. The Bearcats shut out A&M 5 to nothing on the heels of a strong start by Mills. He went six and two-thirds. Got the Cats well into that game. Well, he's throwing in the lower 90s tonight, and he's 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 getting that that slider to the right hinders. He's doing a pretty good job of keeping that outside on the outside part of the plate. Austin Holman, first man up, bottom three, foul territory onto the east lawn. Good contingent out there and all across the ballpark on this Tuesday night. 
Well, Austin Holman's got it hit 356 last year, probably a little bit over his head. He's a little bit under right now. He got off to a real slow start, but the, the back half of the season has been good to him. But he's up to about a 250 batting average, and he was down below 200 for a little bit. So he's really got, I wouldn't say hot, but he has really got back to who he is and put the ball in play. He's a singles doubles guy. And he can run, and uh, he's an excellent base runner. He's a, a risk taker. Dakota Mills, the right-hander out of Meadows Place, Texas, went to Dulles High School down around the Sugarland area. Blinn Junior College before going to Sam Houston State. Fly ball center field. Bryce Johnson, the grab, one out. Bottom of the order now, and George Yancha. But the book on Mills is he's not going to walk you a whole lot. He ranks in the top 25 nationally in least amount of walks allowed and strikeout to base on ball ratio. So you're going to have to earn it against this righty. Strike to George Yancha to begin his count. Well, the first thing the scouting report says on him, this guy's a strike thrower. And all coaches like strike throwers. And when you've got one for Tuesdays uh, that can throw in the, in the low 90s and he's got a pretty good slider, uh, you say, yeah, I'm taking that guy. And there was a the slider. He just missed outside on it, and that's the pitch that he's going to try to tease him for. Took a little bit off that pitch. And Yancha stroked it on the ground into center. Single yeah. and two hits this evening. That, right was, that was his changeup, 84 miles an hour. He hadn't thrown that a whole lot. Uh, and it, it's it's straight. It's a fairly straight. Most people, uh, their changeup is going to sink to arm side, uh, and he doesn't get a run on his, but uh, but he does use it. Pass to diving Andrew Andrew Frije, the shortstop. One out base runner, top of the order, Nick Chorby. Torby went five for 13 in the Ole Miss series. Had a great finale versus the Rebels. Base hit here. Yonch is rounding second. Appears to be Aggies at the corners with one down. And it is. Yeah, nice stroke. Uh, that ball hard to right field. Moved the run up to third base. But you're right, he had a, an outstanding weekend in the conference play. And certainly on, on uh, Sunday was his big day. But, he, he really hit well. Good turn by Yancha. Best opportunity of the night for AM thus far. Tying run 90 feet away. Logan Foster's going to come to the plate. We will get a meeting on the mound. It's head coach Matt Deggs out to talk to Dakota Mills. So first and third, two hole hitter up. Mills struck out Foster looking in the first inning. Yeah. Well, this is what you want. You want two, three, four, you're up. You got two men on base. You got no outs to work with, or one out, uh, but you got two to work with. And so, uh, you know, you hope that, uh, that you might be able to create something. 